Hey folks, welcome to Spooky Appalachia. So tonight I've got a, another story collection ready for y'all. This time it's cryptid stories. It's cryptid stories sent in by you guys, the fans. It's some classic cryptid stories and uh, some old ones that I went back and re-recorded. There's some fresh content in here, so hope y'all enjoy sit back and uh, be prepared for a long one this week we are taking a look at a story that was sent to us by another one of our patreons and it is a story of a bigfoot encounter he had as a kid i was walking through the forest one summer evening in southern arkansas i had gotten into a small gully when i saw what i thought was a bear I wasn't sure, though it looked very, very humanoid. Maybe a deformed bear, I thought? Nope. I left a sandwich I was carrying with me on a rock and backed away. When the thing turned around, it was quite human looking. It was about seven to eight feet tall and had dark brown fur and was extremely bulky looking. It took the sandwich and walked off, ignoring me. As I walked off, it bumped into a small tree and knocked it over. It must have been incredibly strong. I was a little kid at the time, probably 11 years old. I have no proof and no one believed me, but I know a dang bear and that could not have been a bear. I've spent my life in these forests and have never seen anything like that before. Thanks Jordan for sending this story into us. Uh, we definitely believe you and uh, don't think you're crazy. I mean, uh, we get these all the time. Um, Growing up, I spent a lot of time in the woods, too, and, uh, and I've seen some weird stuff. Um, You're in the area for weird stuff. <laughs> yeah, I've seen some weird stuff for sure over the Mothman years. Sounds, Bigfoot sightings, Mothman. It's all possible in West Virginia. Mm -hmm. And th This area is a hot spot. I, I have seen a UFO. And I've possibly seen a ghost. So, yeah, I definitely believe you. You're not crazy. It's, it, stuff gets reported all the time. Um, oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, if you, if you have a story of your own and you want to get that featured here, if it's about ghosts or any kind of sightings, you can email webmaster at spookyappalachia.com. Hey folks, welcome to Spooky Appalachia. Uh, this week we've got another story sent to us by the Mothman Museum. And it's of a Flatwoods monster encounter. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, it's a Mothman sighting story. I, I'm, I'm just messing around. It would be great to get some Flatwoods monster sighting stories in though. Um, this Mothman sighting happened in Ravenswood, uh, West Virginia, back in 2006, on November the 2nd and November the 3rd. It was just before 5 p.m., and it was starting to become dusk. On my side of the road, I saw an extremely tall, human-like figure literally just jump and then float straight up from the ground and into the tops of the trees. There are no houses nearby, just trees and some empty land. I felt no fear at this time, just a feeling of, wow, what the heck was that thing? After a couple minutes, I mentioned it to my son as we neared town but did not tell him exactly where I had seen it. He told me that he had seen it as well, but we both kind of stayed silent about it due to some other weird things that had been happening in our home lately. We were spooked enough as it is. I had to stop. I had not stopped to turn around because I was in a hurry to get somewhere before a certain time. On our way home, a little bit later, maybe 75 to 100 foot further down the road from the original site, 
Both my son and I saw the figure again. He was moving upward in the tree branches of the trees. And then, the next day, November the 3rd, 2006, right before dark, my son saw it again, outside near a small patch of woods. My son noted red eyes during this second sighting. After some research, I knew what we had seen had to be the Mothman. Wow, big thanks to the Mothman Museum for sending this in and allowing us to use this story. Uh, I, I really appreciate it. And, uh, you know, all y'all sending in these stories, too. Uh, I mean, where would I be without all these awesome stories you all send? Uh, I thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. I, I can't begin to thank y'all enough. But back to the story. What'd y'all think of this one? It did kind of sound like your typical Mothman story. Um, there were a bunch of early uh, Mothman stories from the 60s where it just jumped straight up and, and then took it just took off kind of like a helicopter. Uh, that was always stood out to me. Um... Love to hear what you guys think of this story in the comments. And uh, if you hadn't noticed, this was actually one that we featured in the past on the channel. I'm trying to go back and either re-record or have people on who've sent stories to kind of, I guess, remaster them and redo them since we changed, uh, I guess, story readers. I'm now the soul person on the channel but yeah if you'd like to come on and tell yours shoot me an email or something and uh if you would like to send a story you can email us at uh spooky at gmail.com hey folks welcome to another spooky appalachia and jared king tv collab hey folks that's jared um Let's see, which one did people say they liked so much? I forget which video, or video, maybe it's been videos where people said they liked when we uh, did them on uh, you know, focused topics like this. Well, yeah, yeah. this time we're going to do West Virginia cryptids stories. You know, kind of their or origin story, I guess, for a bunch of the more... I guess more famous cryptids or some it's got some of the lesser known ones in there now we didn't do them all i know people are going to be upset that some of their favorites aren't in here uh sorry but they didn't you know probably if people like this i think we'll do we'll probably do another west virginia cryptid one but i would like to if people enjoy this do uh do uh, do one of these from each Appalachian state. That would be fun, wouldn't it? That would. That would definitely would. And uh, I, I decided to start with West Virginia, since that's, you know, where my family's from. And the, the, the West Virginia cryptids just had, I don't know, they're just special to me. But I guess because uh, all these places are close by and, you know, stuff yeah, like that. what you grew up with, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. My dad, I well, I was going to say it later, but my dad and his father actually drove up to uh, the Point Pleasant TNT area when the whole Mothman thing was going on. Uh, I think my grandpa was trying to find it. Oh, man. Yeah. You hear stories about during the Mothman when the uh, flocks of people went up there. Well, my kinfolk were some of those people. Shoot, yeah, man. Yeah. When you love to have been there back then. Oh, yeah. I wasn't alive, but, you know. Right, right. If we had a time machine. Yeah. <clears throat> Go back in time to me. the exact time some of them happened and witnessed it. Oh, yeah. Well, Jared, you want to get into some of these stories? Let's do it, man. I'm ready. All right. So the first one is the Grafton Monster. The town of Grafton 
is in the northern part of the state of West Virginia, about 35 minutes from Morgantown. Grafton was first settled in 1852 by construction crews of the Baltimore Railroad and Ohio Railroad. It was chartered in 1856, and during the Civil War, it was key. It was a key rail center that was occupied both by both Confederate and Union troops. Grafton is also the the home of uh, the International Mother's Day Shrine. The holiday got its startings in Grafton. Also, it is the home to both West Virginia's national cemeteries. So, cool history on um, Grafton I wanted to uh, throw in there. I hope you guys, guys liked that part. But we'll get into the Grafton monster part now. Our story takes place on June 16th, 1964, when a young reporter named Robert Cockrell was driving home from work around 11 o'clock p.m. He was the only car on the road of Riverside Drive since most of the folks in town were in bed at this hour. As he was driving through a curve, he noticed something extremely odd and out of place. A huge white mass was standing between the road and the riverbank. While he drove past it, the thing never moved. But Robert could tell that it was alive. He described it as being about nine feet tall and four feet wide with white or gray in colored skin and described it as being seal-like skin. And then the oddest thing about the creature was it had no head. Startled by this, Robert floored it home and after calming down, he returned with two of his friends to investigate about an hour later. When they got there, the creature was gone without a trace, other than a giant impression left in the grass where it was standing. It was like the creature was lifted up from the spot it stood. The three also noticed an odd low whistling sound coming from the river but they could not find out exactly where it was coming from. After running the story in the paper, monster hunting fever took over the town. More than a hundred people began covering the area at night, hoping to catch a glimpse of the creature. More than 20 people reported seeing it before the newspaper ran a story claiming that the creature was just someone pushing carts and was just my, misidentified as a wildly imaginative story. Man, that is a good one. Now, how in the world would they think that that was somebody pushing carts? Something looking now like that's that. one thing too. I was I was going to say at you know, night, who's pushing carts like exactly. that? On the side of the road at what eleven p.m. Right in a small town. Yeah, but it's something as big as the Grafton monster as described. You know, how could you mistake somebody pushing a cart for something you know that big with no head? And a lot of y'all are from small towns. I'm from a I'm small town. Yep. I currently Most live in a small town. You wouldn't see stuff like this at night. Especially not back then. No. 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 But what's really neat about, you know, the Grafton monster is, even though it's not one you hear about, like, all the everyday, like, you know, Mothman, Bigfoot, it's still one of those that's always lingering in the background. Yeah. You know, there's always somebody with a story or an experience. Well, I would definitely, if anybody knows of any uh, Grafton monster stories or experiences, just send those in. 
I could not find any to save my life. Originally, this was going to be about Grafton Monster, but it kind of... Kind of took its own shape. Yeah, it did. Um, it, the, the West Virginia cryptids made more sense, but we, we couldn't find any more Grafton Monster sighting stories. So if you've got any, send them to us. I'll feature them on here because you know, that's what I do. I think Jared has another kind of obscure West Virginia cryptid next. I really do. And what's really neat about this one is it's one of the ones is, I don't know, it's kind of like the underdog, you know, it's the one you don't hear uh, a lot about, you know, mm -hmm. but it's one that's really, really interesting. Definitely. And that's called the Vegetable Man or Veggie Man. One hot July day, 1968, a young man by the name of Jennings Frederick, who was around 19 year old at the time, had gone one chuck hunting near his home in Fairmont, West Virginia. He hadn't had much luck and was about to head home. We heard a strange high-pitched sound, like that of a sped-up recording. A voice reportedly said to him, You need not fear me. I wish to communicate. I come as a friend. We know all of you. I come in peace. I wish for medical assistance. I need your help. He then saw a greenish skeletal stalk-like creature, about six to seven feet tall, with slanted yellow eyes. It had human-like facial features and long vine-like arms that were no wider than a quarter. His fingers had suction cups on the end of them. Before he could move, he felt a vine wrap around him. Then what felt like a needle stuck into his arm. He could not get away. The creature had him in some type of trance-like paralysis state. All he could do is look at the creature with those eyes that turned from red to yellow as it sucked blood from Jenny's arm. Once the creature finished, then walked off out of sight. Jenny then heard an odd humming like sound. He thought it might be a craft taking off. Jennings recovered from his trance like state and went home. He didn't tell his family of the event, and months later, he did tell the story to a UFO researcher from West Virginia named Gary Barker. Gary dubbed the creature Vegetable Man. I had heard this story a few times over the years and thought this was it. But I later found out while reading a post on Appalachian Oddity that there is actually more to this strange tale. Included are accounts of two more stories of this larger one from Appalachian Oddity. When Jennings was still in school his mother reportedly witnessed a strange devil-like monster which supposedly came from a flying saucer that landed in a field near the home. She was washing dishes one morning when she saw a small black or dark green creature from her kitchen window. The creature had pointed ears, a tail, no clothing, and was reportedly filling a bag with grass and dirt. Just beyond the humanoid figure was a five foot tall, 10 foot wide dome shaped craft with an extended elevator. The creature appeared to be attached to a ship by a cable. The craft was silver and cream in coloration. It had a row of windows that rotated counterclockwise while producing a humming noise. Mrs. Frederick ran down, uh, ran from the window, only to return a few minutes later and see the, quote, satanic looking being take off 
in the saucer, which lifted slightly off the ground, while humming slightly louder than before. Mrs. Frederick told her son, when he returned from school, Jenny's reportedly found de depressions in the ground, clawed tracks, which convinced Jenny of his mother's claims. After his discharge from the Air Force, Jenny's had a strange man in black encounter between 1 a.m. and 4 a.m. Jenny's was woke up by a red flashing of light. He grabbed his 38 revolver from under his pillar and investigated the living room, where he found a small gas canister. A hand grabbed him, put a needle in his left arm, and he saw three men in black turtlenecks, slacks, and ski masks. One of them said, the dogs have been darted and everyone gassed. They reportedly put a gas mask over Jennings, his face, and questioned him about the UFOs, what he thought they were, and what he thought of the future. Hmm. A lot Man. of strangeness with that one. You know, I, I, really I thought of this for the first time hearing you read it this time. What's that? Jennings' mother, that creature from the UFO she saw way before the Veggie Man, was uh -huh. getting dirt and grass in a, like a bag. I wonder uh -huh. what the possibility of, of yeah, it well, is that, that maybe, that? maybe, maybe. She, he, maybe that creature grew Veggie Man on his planet with our dirt and grass. That's very possible. That could be why he said, you know, I know all of you um, and I need your help. You know, maybe yeah. he was trying to find a way to survive. You know, how, mm -hmm. how did things, you know, grow here? You know, uh, nutrients and things like that. Very possible. Mm-hmm. Ties it, ties it together. Yeah, I'd never thought of that before. Just, just a neither. theory that popped in my head while you're reading it. People might hate it, too, but man. Eh, hopefully people don't hate it. <laughs> right, right. No, that's a good, oh. that's a good one, man. I like that. That's really, that's interesting. Yeah, thanks. It just popped in my head. Well, that's a great story. Uh, people tell me all the time they've never heard of Veggie Man. I, I don't, I forget where I heard about it the first time. I, I, it was probably just growing up. A lot of these right. are like Grafton Monster, Veggie Man, Flatwoods Monster. I heard about now, I growing admit, up. I had never heard to, about a lot of these. Veggie Man was one of them I had never heard of. You know, hmm. uh, the Grafton Monster I'd never heard of. You know, I'd heard, uh, you know, naturally Bigfoot and, you know, of course, Mothman, you know. Um I don't think anybody can be anywhere close to Appalachia and, and you know, growing, growing up and not hear of Mothman. Had you heard of Flatwoods uh, Monster? A lot of people told me that and heard of that one. Um, I don't think so. I said, I, said I, uh, I didn't hear about a lot of these until I started uh, YouTube and started getting, you know, talking to people into the, you know, in the, in the cryptid fields and things like that, you know, mm -hmm. and, that's when, you know, I started getting all these stories about, you know, all these, you know, wild cryptids and stuff, you know, and experiences and everything. And that's when I learned a lot, too, of never say never and never say impossible. You know, always keep an mm -hmm. open mind. Because even back then, there was things that people said was impossible that we even have proof of today you know such as like you know ufos things like that you know yeah you know the, our government is saying yeah. hey ufos are a thing they're we don't real. know what they but, are but they know it was all right yeah well, you know we we, <laughs> we 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 already knew <laughs> yeah but but yeah it's it's wild so and speaking of ufos i've got a crazy ufo story coming up soon so be be on the lookout for that Fan submitted yeah. crazy UFO story. Oh man, that was good. To be sure, anyway, have those notifications on. Yo, yeah, yeah. Make sure you you like, subscribe, and have the notification set. Um. So our next one is actually a famous cryptid. 
in Appalachia. It's everybody's favorite cryptid. It's the Blue Devil. No, nah, I'm just kidding. It's Mothman. <laughs> um, bum, bum, bum. No, the Blue Devil's <laughs> one I thought needs to be done, but it did, didn't make didn't make it into this one. Definitely will in the next West Virginia one. If we do another West Virginia right. one. So it's there's a lot of debate over what the first Mothman sighting was. A whole lot. Um yeah, I've heard some the, heated discussions about that too. Oh yeah, people people get real heated about this. Yeah. Now what I've heard, you you know, I've got a lot of friends in Point Pleasant, right? And a bunch of them have told me that thing has been around that area for a very long time, way before it, it got all over uh, the news and everything. Oh yeah, I mean, um, I've heard people say that it, you know, even stories of uh, sightings like that, you know, of you know, of that des- descriptions of it, you know, that's like Mothman to a T, even goes back to like, uh, you know, the Ming Dynasty, ancient China, you know, things like that. Hmm. Yeah, I think I've heard something like that, it's like cave paintings or something, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. I could be wrong, but I've I've heard a lot. I've also want to point out that people in town have also told me, you know, every every time you hear this story, it says the 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 sightings of the creature stopped right. after the Silver Bridge collapsed. Now, people in town have have told me these that's not the case, and if the stories I get in tell us anything yeah that that matches up because i get a moth i probably get one or two mothman sightings sent to me a month yeah so i think the first one in john keel's book i think was uh oh november 1st 1966 two national guardsmen at a uh, armory near camp Conley Road in Point Pleasant, West Virginia, spotted what they thought looked like a uh, humanoid figure that was brown in colorization, perched on top of a log. Then, and then, on November 15th, just a few days later, in 1966, two married couples were joyriding around in a black 1957 Chevy. They went to hang out at a spot in Point Pleasant. It was kind of a lover's lane type spot, the TNT area. One of the couples was Linda and Roger Scarberry. The other, Steve and Mary Malati. All four attended Point Pleasant High School at this time, they suddenly saw two circular fiery red eyes next to the abandoned North Power Plant. They said the gray man-like creature was six to seven feet tall with folded wings behind its back. They quickly drove off on Route 62 after seeing this creature. The couple's then saw the creature on a hill by a large billboard. It spread its wings out to about 10 feet in length and went straight up into the air and began gliding over the car. When they got to a straight stretch of road, they were going about 100 miles an hour and the thing was able to keep up with and follow them. They were all they were only able to get away from the creature when they reached the edge of Point Pleasant. The monster disappeared off into a field as they entered the town. After stopping at the local dairy land to discuss what had happened, the teens decided to head back onto Route 62 to see if it was still there. They discovered a dead dog in the road and claimed the creature 
then jumped over the car and went through the woods on the opposite side of the road. They drove back into town and stopped at the local Tiny's Diner and contacted the police. Deputy Mellard Halstead accompanied them back to the TNT area again, but there was no clear sign of the creature. The witnesses, however, claimed to see red eyes, shadows, and dust being kicked up nearby. They also reportedly heard a strange noise that sounded like a squeak or a record being sped up. The Malleys accompanied Linda and Roger back to the Scarberry home where they stayed awake all night with fear. The next day, the sheriff held a press conference and the newspapers began being written about the story. By that night, the TNT area was full of cars and people were looking for the monster, while the locals called it the bird. The newspapers called the creature Mothman. Man, that is so awesome. Mm-hmm. And, In, you know, it, go ahead. I was going to say, you can see why this is, uh, people have been so into this for so long. Yeah. And over a hundred like, people in town have said to, were said to have seen this thing too. Right. So, you know, that many people, you know, one, maybe two, you could, you know, maybe dismiss it possibly. But, you know, when there's tons and tons of, you know, accounts, eyewitnesses and stuff, you know, that's kind of hard to dismiss. Yeah, definitely. And like I said, people are still reporting seeing that thing there around that TNT area to this day. I think yeah. I, I believe that I got one last Christmas. I think it was last Christmas. Um, 2022, where somebody uh, ran up on it in a road in Point Pleasant near the TNT area. Man. Mm -hmm. Definitely wild. Definitely. Well, everybody's favorite cryptid, too. Oh, yeah. You know, is it uh, the harbinger of sorrow or does it, you know, is it to warn people about events? That's another Some thing people, people are yeah. about. We had we had uh, a lady um, send a story a couple weeks ago, if you remember who yep. uh, believed that she had a mothman land up on her roof and was flapping around and screeching. And yep. uh, then she had a dream. I think it was that night that uh, the bridge that uh, they were supposed to drive across that day in South Carolina, I think it was. I think it was. Over to Georgia. Um, some There was some kind of traffic accident there. She had a dream about it and decided to go another route. And later heard on the news that uh, there was an accident on that that very bridge. Yeah, so there, therefore, you know, it maybe have warned her. Yeah. So definitely, right. an, definitely an interesting one, for Absolutely. sure. Absolutely, definitely. Uh, the next one we have up on the list is definitely another oldie but a goodie. That's the Flatwoods Monster. On September 12th, 1952, around 7 o'clock on Friday evening, a group of young boys consisting of Eugene Lemon, 17, Neil Nunley, 14, Eddie May, 13, Freddie May, 10, and Ronnie Shavier, also 10, were playing football on the lawn of Flatwoods Elementary School. Suddenly, the group saw what they described as a fireball fly quickly overhead and appear to land in a vertically uh, appear to land vertically on a nearby hilltop just past the Fisher Farm. The boys were in disbelief. They weren't sure if you know what they had just seen was a flying saucer, you know. A, a meteorite, an airplane crash, 
you know, do people need help? Should they report it? The boys run to Eddie and Freddie's grandparents' house. Their mother, Kathleen May, was there at the time. The boys explained the story to the relatives. Kathleen May joined the group of boys and headed out to the hilltop where the mysterious object had appeared to land. On the way up the steep hill, they noticed a pulsating or flashing light accompanied by loud hissing and banging sounds. Once they got a bit closer, they noticed a terrible sulfuric smell. The group finally came up on the object. They saw previously and found out right away it was not a meteorite. To their surprise, it was some type of craft. At this point, the group decided it might be best to get out of there. But before leaving, they noticed movement next to a nearby tree. They shined a flashlight toward the movement, and that's when they saw the creature. It was about 12 feet tall, with a round, blood-red face and bright, glowing eyes that illuminated the entire area. It also had a helmet or shroud over its head, described as being shaped like the ace of spades from a playing card deck. The rest of its body appeared to be made up of some type of green metallic material. It was terrifying, so they began to run. As they were trying to get away, it sprayed them with uh, some kind of oil creature did not walk, but hovered after them. The group managed to escape unharmed, but each member felt sick for several days after the incident. And unsurprisingly, the media had a field day with this incident, and the group, now known as the Seven, became quite famous. They even traveled as far as New York City to appear on talk shows to discuss what they saw. Man, that too is yep. a good one. Mm -hmm. One of my favorites. Um, there's a, a couple more sighting stories that uh, I did not include in this. Um, they're, they're really good. Uh there was also, oh, James, one of our followers, James is from Flatwoods. His mother and uncle, I believe he said, saw the the fireball in the sky, like on their back deck. I thought that was really cool. Oh, man. Yeah. But um, there was also another one that uh, I don't see talked about a lot, like in the 80s or 90s. Where somebody uh, saw the thing again. It like wow. crashed or, or something. And somebody was driving by and saw it there. Man, oh man. So I thought that, that was really cool and worth mentioning. Yeah, for sure, man. Wow. Definitely one of my favorite cryptids. I don't live too far from Flatwoods, so that's probably why. Right. I like that one so much. Um, been to the museum a couple times and two Flatwoods a couple times. I we you even I, saved it. What's that? You even saved it. <laughs> I remember the video where you guys went to the Oh, yeah. Uh, I the, forgot the about that. Yeah. We went to the chairs, yeah. We that went really to, cool. yep, yep. That was a cool video. That's, a, that's another one I need to share oh, out really again sometime. really fun adventure, too. Yep, yep. Definitely, definitely was. Um, let's see. I think we've got one more cryptid on the list. Another good one, too. Oh, and it's me. It's me reading this time. Ah, um, there you go. This is about the uh, Ukwa creature. Not a lot of people have heard about that either. You know, we've got yep. a we've got a bunch. We got more obscure ones, I think, than we do the famous ones, which is good. Yeah, um, for sure. You know. Yeah. So, the Ugwa is a freshwater cryptid that is said to look like a giant 
two-headed snapping turtle. And it weighs in at about 500 pounds and it's 20 feet long. It roams West Virginia and Pennsylvania areas, mostly dwelling in the Ohio and Allegheny rivers. Though it is known as an aquatic cryptid, it is said to come on to land and feed on deer, cattle, and unsuspecting humans. There have been several sightings of the Ugwa in Marin County, West Virginia. It is said that the first sighting of the creature was in 1745 where a witness reported a giant two-headed turtle coming out of the river and pulled a 12-year-old boy who was fishing on the bank into the river, and he was never seen again. Now, I also heard a story a couple years ago about some guys fishing, I forget where it was at, and they saw the thing, and it was real recent, just a couple years ago, they were doing nighttime fishing in northern West Virginia, and they uh, spotted it. They uh, they were oh, using man. spotlight fishing, you know. Yeah, and th and they saw it come up out of a river. Now that was on would the news. be something to see, yeah. especially at night. Yeah, it was on the news, man. I saw oh, it on my wow. local news. Dang. Yeah. That's freaky. Yeah. Now, you know, one time I was fishing in the New River, and I saw, it wasn't that big, but it was a giant um, snapping turtle swim right past me in the New, I was wading, and uh, it was pretty deep water, probably up to my waist, and I saw a giant snapping turtle swim by me. Golly. It was probably about as big as my torso. I think it was huge. It scared Dang, the... Dang, man scared me so bad when i saw that i didn't know they got that big yeah they man, I've huge heard they huge boy yeah so something like this you know it really out of the question yeah yeah yeah, yeah. has merit to it you know yeah yep yeah. i feel bad for that 12 year old boy who got eaten just you know he's minding his own business fishing got swallowed up yeah you imagine you know just trying to Take in some fish and relax, you know, enjoy the day, evening, mm -hmm. whatever, you know. And then, oh, 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 oh. yeah, <laughs> Gone. burp. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dang. Man, oh, man. Well, folks, um, I think that about does it for our stories from uh, for West Virginia cryptids. Uh, let us know what you think in the comments. Should we do another state next? Absolutely. If you folks want, you know, you, you know, if you want to keep going, you know, more states, more cryptids, more stories, let us know and send in the stories, you know, send in some experiences, ones you've heard or anything. Yeah. These I looked up and found stuff about. So we'll probably do that with another state, but we could go back and do more cryptids and share people's stories, too. Definitely. I didn't think about that. But uh, yeah, uh, thank you all for listening. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment, all that jazz. And also check out Jared's channel. Look him up, Jared King TV. There's always a link in the description, but go over there and give, show him some love too. Thanks so much. I really appreciate that. Oh, no problem, man. And uh, yeah, I, we do a lot of stuff together, Jimmy yeah. and I. So, you know, I'm on here a lot. He's on my channel a lot. Mm -hmm. so, you know, hey, okay, well, like we say, you know, it's a good recipe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah people love our stuff for sure yeah, they really sure. do man we enjoy it too we enjoy it just as much so yeah i get it uh, we're both uh texting each other saying we're excited to get these things recorded and get them absolutely. out there for y'all to enjoy absolutely well, well we'll catch you in the next one hey folks welcome to spooky appalachia uh, this week we have a story sent in by one of our longtime friends and fans. And this is about an encounter a friend of hers had in the in early 2000s with a winged humanoid or what she called a gargoyle, which is pretty interesting. This is the first uh, gargoyle 
sighting story we've been sent. We've been sent a bunch of winged humanoid and Mothman sighting stories, but this this one's a little bit different. And uh, really the first I've heard of a gargoyle, at least around here, but apparently the, it comes up sometimes, occasionally. It was the early 2000s. And a friend I was working with was heading up around Blacksburg, Virginia one night to visit someone at Mountain Lake. When she came back the next day, she came right over to ask me about gargoyle-like creatures in the area near the exit to Mountain Lake. Now, there are legends of gargoyles in Appalachia, but none this far that I know of. Anyways, it was late. I think she said around 10 p.m. She was near the mountain lake exit, heading southwest. Suddenly, on the right shoulder of the road, she saw something large. It filled the area, bigger than a dog, but smaller than a cow. She couldn't figure out what it was as she passed. And then she saw what looked like a winged gargoyle-like creature squatted down on the shoulder. She said she looked back to see what it was in the taillights, and then there was nothing there in the road. Wow. Uh, so big thanks to the fan who sent this in. Like I said a minute ago, I'd heard around some uh, uh, about some gargoyle sightings, nothing too close by. Uh, Mountain Lake is about 45 minutes from me, give or take. I've been there a couple times. Um, I think I was in a wedding out there once. It's where they had, uh, they filmed that movie Dirty Dancing. It's pretty famous for that. Um, the same fan sent another gargoyle encounter that happened in Bluefield, Virginia, that I'll uh, I'll feature on here another time. And that's about two and a half or so hours away from Mountain Lake. Maybe it's the same thing. And uh, I did some searching around, and I didn't find a lot about gargoyle sightings reported around here. This stuff can be kind of hard to find sometimes, too. Uh, I did see some around the Great Lakes area around 2000s, but, uh, you know, it got me thinking about the wing humanoid-type creatures people report seeing all the time, which we get. And also Mothman, you know? I, I imagine all these things look pretty similar. Maybe they're even the same thing. Maybe it's the same creature or uh, same uh, type of creatures. What, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. And then uh, remember, if you have had a paranormal type encounter like this, that you, you'd like to see get featured on Spooky Appalachia, you can send me the story either through our Google form, email SpookyAppalachia at gmail.com, or uh, our Facebook group, uh, Spooky Appalachia. That's another way you can do it. Hey, folks. Welcome to another Spooky Appalachia. Uh, this week we have a story sent in by one of our Patreons. And uh, it's about an encounter he had, or may have had, with the Yowie creature of legends in... Australia. Yeah, that's right. All the way in Australia. It happened to him back in December of 2013. I was walking the old wood end logging rail line trail that had been converted into a walking trail. This path runs through Wombat Natural National Forest. It dead ends into the town of Woodend, which includes the tale of Picnic at Hanging Rock. I was walking through the bush when I saw a figure walk across the path. It was tall 
hairy, and humanoid. It was down the trail about a hundred yards, maybe a little over. It was walking across the path from dense foliage into more dense vegetation. Russell, walk out, walk in, Russell. When I caught up to the point on the trail, I could see indications of something walking through the bushes. It was summer, so everything was bone dry. Dust was covered in eucalyptus bark. The trail is gravel, not much in the way of tracking. An odor was in the air, mixed with the heavy smell of eucalyptus oil from the surrounding trees. It was pungent and had subtile cinnamon and wet fur smell mixed with cardboard and body odor. I hiked on. It's an old indigenous area as well. The location was timbered with rainforest and the rainforest is coming back. The summers are hot and dry and the winters are wet and swampy. It is a gorgeous area though. Wow, that was an awesome story. Uh, the Yowie, I believe, is the uh, the Australian equivalent of Bigfoot. And uh, there's been stories coming from Australia, this creature, for many years. So pretty cool to get one of these. Uh, remember, if you've had a uh, paranormal sighting or encounter you'd like to see get featured on here, you can fill out our Google form or uh, just email us, spookyappalachia at gmail.com. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Spooky Appalachia. I'm Jimmy. and I'm Jared. Uh, yeah, joining us today is Jared from Jared, Jared King TV. Um, thanks for ha coming on. Uh, it's always awesome to be here, man. Um, yeah. So uh, this week's story was sent to uh, us by a uh, longtime fan and author, Allie Rose. And uh, in this story... She and I believe she may have had a sighting of a devil monkey, which is something we covered, uh, I guess, a couple of months back. And uh, it took place in Carroll County, Maryland, back in 2023. Yeah, I said, uh, I used to drive through the back roads in rural Maryland to get to my workplace in Carroll County. So one morning... I saw something strange in the rearview mirror, right out of the corner of my eye. So I've been the only one in the car for several minutes. And at first, I thought a car was suddenly tailing me. So I was very confused. However, when I looked fully into the mirror, nothing was there. At least not until I looked into the tree line. What I saw was very strange, and I can only describe it as an outline of a transparent humanoid figure swinging through the branches like a monkey would. It was so bizarre. I got this horrible feeling that I was being stalked, and I got the urge to step on the gas and floor it the rest of the way to work. But I remembered hearing that if you see something in Appalachia, you should never acknowledge it. So I bit my tongue and calmly drove the rest of the way to work. Nothing happened on the way home. Wow. That was freaky, man. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I would, uh, since she supports the channel so much and is such a big a fan, um... Definitely check out her book, Ghost Girl. It's uh, really good. Um, it documents all of her, uh, I don't know if it's all of, but a lot of her uh, 
paranormal experiences she had growing up. Um, again, it's called Ghost Girl, and it's by Allie Rose. It's a really good book if you love stories. It's full of stories. It's, it's pretty great. Uh, definitely check it out. But, uh, Jared, what do you think of this encounter? I mean, have you ever heard of anything like that? I have not, man. But, you know, there's so much, you know, that people experience here in Appalachia. Mm -hmm. And, you know, through these, you know, these old mountains and things like that, especially throughout time, there's no telling what somebody may have conjured up or oh, yeah. something that's just already existed. You know, yep. a lot of the stuff, you know, like uh, a lot of the folklore and things, Go all the way back to the Native American times, so mm -hmm. it's really hard to say. I'm sure there's still a lot of stuff out there that nobody's even experienced. Oh yeah, um, it does. Look, her and I talked, and it did remind me, of, and she agreed because she had heard our devil monkey story. It kind of sounded like the devil monkey, um, if you've heard of that. And uh, the only thing that didn't fit was the transparent part. Right, and that was kind of wild. Yeah, kind of reminded me uh, Predator, the movie Predator. Yeah, that's kind of <laughs> what I was thinking of, yeah. too. You know. But I, I assume you've heard of the, uh, don't if you see something strange in Appalachia, don't acknowledge it. Yeah, I've heard I've that. Heard that. I've, yeah. I've heard that, I've heard in heard the, that. Uh, about the whistle, too. I've heard, you know, if you hear something whistle, don't whistle back. I've heard if you uh, hear something whistle, don't whistle back. And uh, if you hear something, you're by yourself or something, hear your name called, uh, don't answer it. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, definitely. What Those about you folks? Let us know if you've heard about anything like this or anything. Oh, similar. yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, we're trying to figure out what it was. This, um, we're going to title it Possible Devil Monkey uh, Sighting, I believe. But uh, yeah, we don't, uh, we aren't a hundred percent sure on on this. So uh, right, right. Any so. You guys, uh, big big cryptid enthusiasts, uh, let us know. I know a lot Definitely. of people think I am. I don't, you know, I don't know them all. Right, that's right. <laughs> I don't know. know everything. I'm not that's an right. expert. I'm not an expert, but uh, really, who is? You know. Exactly, but something else too, guys. If you've had uh, like a, a, a similar experience or something like that, you know. Right down here. Yep. Uh, send any any kind of experience, send it yeah. to us. It's down here in the ticker. It's uh, You email it to uh, spookyappalachia at gmail.com, and we'll feature it on here. Uh, it's what we run off of is these, uh, these stories. Um, definitely check out Jared's channel, Jared King TV. He does some awesome stories, too, just like us. And uh, I really appreciate that uh, he keeps coming on and reading off the stories for us. He's hey. an amazing storyteller. Honored to be uh, here. Brother. Yeah, we have fun, me and oh, you. Yeah. And uh, it seems like all the fans seem to like it. So we keep having you as much as you want. Um, oh, yeah. Got some amazing fans, man. Mm -hmm. Oh, and uh, awesome. big thank you to our Patreons. Alvin, uh, oh, Adam, Alvin, Charles, Danielle, Donald, Jeff, Jordan, Julia, Linda, Shannon, Taylor, and uh, Werewolf Radar Podcast. Be sure to check those guys out. And uh, yeah, thanks for checking out this one, and uh, we hope you enjoy it. Cool. Do you want to do a reaction video too? Sure. Okay, um, switching to reaction video format. Um, let's see. What have I got saved? I think I say I had one I wanted to show you. I don't know if I saved it, though. Um, reaction videos. I have a bunch saved. Let's see. Ghost head. No. I, don't th I think that's one I already showed during a live stream. Oh, that one's so creepy. <laughs> <laughs> I, ended up, I was like, oh, man. No, not this one. Did I save it?
Maybe I didn't save it. I can do that real quick, though. Oh, yeah. I mean, I saved the link, but I didn't download it, you know? Right. I want to get AD on for uh, a couple of these. That'd be, that'd be fun, I think. Yeah, that'd be cool, man. I was talking to him a while back, you know, like we was talking about that, you know, and he's like, man, he said, I'd love to. He said, I really would. He said, it's just find the time. He said, <laughs> he said, where he works so much. Mm -hmm. His work schedule, he said, is really crazy. Well, I saved the link, but it says it, I guess they must have took it down or something. There was one I was going to show you, but I can, uh, I can just grab another one. Let's see, there's this one. Let me see if I remember. Oh, that's the one we just did. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. What's this? All right, I found it. All right. I'm going to... How often do you get messages from people asking you to they'll promote uh, if you'll promote something something of theirs? Is it often? Quite a bit. Oh, okay. Because I've started getting it, and it's like two or three times a week somebody asks me to. They're like, "I'm a big fan of the of your channel." I'm like, "You are. What do you like about it?" Right. <laughs> yeah. What's your favorite video, and, and then, what do you like about yeah. it specifically? <laughs> and then they don't respond. Yeah. Well, this person's wanting me to. Uh, buy their book. All right, I grabbed the video. <clears throat> Let's see. Refresh. Where did it go? I saved it. Where did it save to? Uh... Okay. All right. So I will add it to the stream. Okay. Once I remember how to do that. <laughs> New edit layout. Um, you know, we, we had to figure this out last time, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I said, because that, that's that's kind of thing there. You know, I said, I, I've never fooled with that much. So that was kind of a new one on me. Present video file. Reaction video. Look, 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 look. It's lit. Yeah. All right. Um, oh, it's already on there. I'm going to turn off the sound because it's hard to tell what's in the sound on these. Let's see. Can I make it bigger? Bigger, bigger, bigger. Is it edit layout? Make it bigger. to take up the star of the show here too much so it can take up nah, me. You're good, brother. <laughs> uh, now, down to uh, where it shows like uh, the person-by-person -person stuff, one of those, yeah. has, like, I think it's like uh, two pictures, like one on top of the other one, then one big one on the side. Uh-huh. That might work. No, it didn't do anything. No. Anyway, I think it's big enough. Um, oh, yeah. All right. So, okay, I'll go ahead and start. <clears throat> hey, everyone. Welcome to Spooky Appalachia Reacts. And uh, we've got Jared on again for another cool reaction video. We'll see what Jared thinks of this video. I hadn't watched it in a while, so uh, 
I guess we'll get a, be getting a fresh reaction from me too. Yeah, um, yeah I don't think titled, I've seen this one. Yeah, it's titled Miami UFOs. Let's give it a watch. Let's see. I already see a light up there, don't you? Yeah. Three lights. Kind of reminds me of the triangle UFO. Yeah, it really does. And there's oh, maybe a lot of them. Oh, that thing's flying. Did you see oh, that? Oh, man. What'd you see? It was like, you know, it's like the, the lights, you know, like they just shifted and shot away. Yeah. Now, oh, oh, it looked away. Or was it gone? Oh, now it's definitely gone. There's still yeah. a little bit more to the video than what I see. It could just be the person talking, but it looks like whatever it was is gone. Well, that was neat and wild. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Let's see. It's going to loop again, I think. No, I had to hit play. Let's see. All right. So there, yeah. Lord. <clears throat> yeah. Look at that. That's just wild. It, it looks like, too, after, after it moves around, it kind of looks like it stretches out, too. Into like yeah. Little, yeah. Huh. That's, that's strange. That's really interesting, isn't that it? That is. I, I believe that's this is the first one I've ever seen where I've seen a possible UFO sighting. Where it actually like moves that fast, moves again, and then transforms. Yeah, and it's it's stopping and start. You know, it's moving, stops, moving, yeah. stops. Now, I haven't looked into this. I, I just saved the video a while back, so I don't know if it's like some common fake ufo video or anything but i mean if you notice when it first starts it seems to be one big giant sphere like yeah then and it then branches it off into, into three. three then it shoots off and goes back into one then yep the sphere, then the long sphere that's interesting wow that's just mind-blowing yeah, <laughs> it really is. <laughs> I mean, wow. I'm trying to think of what this could be, but I mean, what does stuff like that, you know? See, there I it don't is know. one. It's splitting into three. It just, then it just takes off and it goes back to one. Then this. I don't know what could do that. I mean, I don't have a lot of knowledge on uh, aircraft, but that's well, weird. Now, I know a lot of folks and uh, said thinks that a lot of times, you know, when they see a UFO or something like that, you know, they think that it's a weather balloon. And a mm -hmm. lot of times it has proven to be a weather balloon. But I, there's mm -hmm. no way possible that I could think of that a weather balloon could do that. No, that is just rewinding it. Like the the it's just the movement patterns are dumb. yeah, and what's strange too when it goes from uh like the sphere to you know where it stretches out yeah you know it's not like three separate lights in a row it's like one solid one solid light. I wonder if it could be doing that where it's just moving so fast. Yeah, that could be. That could be. Wow, I don't know, man. This one is wild. Yeah. For sure. We'll give it one last. Uh... <laughs> That's just strange, yeah. man. Yeah. I got to get me one of them. Yeah. <laughs> I fly over people's houses and wave at them. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh man. Um If this is a fake or some kind of elaborate hoax, I, I don't know. Like I said, if this is fake, it's well done. Because, I mean, it's just the movements of it alone is wild. Uh -huh. Wow. All right. So, I, yeah, I think we're both leaning towards it's de definitely something strange. And, you know, that it's all over the news these days with the... You know, there are real UFOs, and the government has came out saying there are real UFOs. They're, they're, they're a thing, uh, yep. and we don't know what they are. So some of these are uh, pretty well-made hoaxes, I believe is what they've, they've said. Or, and uh, a, a small percentage of them are, they think it's real, and they don't know. You know, it's some kind of un, un, unidentified craft, you know. Yeah. Um, thanks again, Jared, for coming on for one of these. I think these work out pretty well with two people. But, you oh, know. yeah, definitely, man. Definitely. Makes it a lot of fun, too. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, man, that was so cool. That um, was. So if you guys know of some good, good clips we could react to, send them to us. Uh, SpookyAppalachia at gmail.com or send us your uh, stories to be featured on here. And uh, check out Jared King TV on uh, YouTube. He's an awesome storyteller. Um, really appreciate you coming on, man. Hey, I, it's always it's always an honor to be here, Brian. Mm -hmm. Love having you. Hey, folks! Welcome back to Spooky Appalachia. How are y'all doing today? So, we've got another fan submitted story. This time, it's a Bigfoot encounter or a possible Bigfoot encounter sent in by a fan. And it was in Bedford, Virginia. I believe, yep, yeah, uh, it says Bedford, Virginia, 1978. I was born in Roanoke, but when I was maybe 11 or 12 years old, Around 1978, my family had a small weekend cabin on the Bedford end of Smith Mountain Lake. We were on a cove. And so to the left was the lake and the right was a forest with open land. There was a barbed cattle wire fence that ran along the dirt road so you couldn't go hiking into the woods. I had walked up the road to see if my friends were home that weekend in the house across the cove from us. They weren't there that weekend and so I was walking back home. The lake is on my left and the wooded area is on my right. It was about two p.m. and the sun was very bright. I know it had to have been around July because it was so hot and we had been swimming that weekend. I was walking and glanced over into the woods and saw something very dark and semi-crouched over behind a pine tree looking towards a small clearing in the woods at some deer. At first, I thought it was a bear, but bears do not crouch like that. And thought maybe it was an Angus heifer rubbing on the tree. But it wasn't moving, and it was in a semi-crouched position. Now, I only saw the back of him. He was in the shadows of the pine trees, but he had dark hair that was almost black. Not overly long, but shaggy. It was definitely crouched on two legs in a hunched position behind the tree. I don't remember his head, but he did have broad shoulders. The wind was blowing to my back, so I didn't get any odor from whatever it was. I watched very briefly and then ran very, very fast back to the house. I told my daddy, and he said to stay away from the woods and close to the house. I know when we left the next day, the, that whatever that was, object or 
human or whatever behind the tree was not there. So I eliminated in my mind it just being a branch or something. Wow, that's a really cool old story there. Um, the lady that sent this in told me she believe, always believed it was Bigfoot. Um, she didn't really say why, but uh, definitely a fascinating one. I love these old stories like that. So uh, please keep sending them in. Um, for those of y'all that have been with us from the beginning, this is actually one of the first stories that was ever sent to us. I, you know, I've been in the process of uh, re-recording some of the older ones since I'm the storyteller now. I hope y'all like that better. If not, well, sorry you're stuck with me. <laughs> um, let me know what you thought about this story in the comments. I know I really enjoyed it. I'm sure you guys will as well. Um, if you're new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button and everyone else, make sure to like, comment, and, uh, get this one shared out. Uh, I really appreciate all y'all sharing me out. Um, it really means a lot. Uh, we're really, really growing. I don't, I, I don't know. I guess it means y'all really like me. Ah! Thanks. I, I appreciate it. I, I really, really do. And um, I will catch you in the next one. Hey, folks. Uh, welcome to Spooky Appalachia. Uh, today, I'm joined by Jared from Jared King TV. Hey, folks. How's it going? So, Jared's going to be sharing for us today a story from his uncle that uh, he, he had heard of in the past after hearing LeBron Fett's um, Green Eyes story. He decided to get this story from his uncle. Yep. I thought now would be a good time. This is going to be coming out the first week of October. Uh, the... Green Eyes is either a ghost, in some cases, of a, I think it's a, which, which side was this soldier supposed to have been on in the stories that it's a ghost? Do you, uh, do you know? I really can't remember if it's a Union or Confederacy. I can't, I can't remember. remember either, but uh, apparently he had his uh, head blown off by a cannon, is what I had heard, and um, he's... It, He's doomed to search for his head for all eternity or something like that, I believe. And then in uh, other tales, it's a cryptid that was uh, attracted to the area because all the, uh, the, the death and suffering that occurred there. Yeah, and, and you know, there's of, also one that goes back to the Native American uh, culture that you know goes even further back. Oh really? I didn't know yeah, that. I didn't until recently. Oh, cool. Do you do you know anything else about it or not really? That's just what someone had uh, somebody had told me once. Oh, okay. Well, uh and you know, since we're we're going into the spooky month, I guess it is. Absolutely. I, I, yeah, you know, since it's might be a ghost, uh, you know, we're, we're trying to do it like a, a ghost theme this month, so what better time? Absolutely. Well, Jared, if you want to take, you want to read this story for him since it's your uncle's story. Absolutely. Yeah. After hearing them, you know, about LeBron's uh, fat's experience and everything. Uh, I remember hearing my uncle talk about one back when I was real little, you know, well, not long after that, I went over, you know, and I called him up and got to talking to him and stuff and everything. And he tells me to come by one evening and he shared his experience. Now, I said, this is a story about an encounter with green eyes in the Chickamauga battlefield. And this is straight from my uncle and his own words. I said, well, it was 1973. And I was working two jobs to help my mother with some bills and my own bills. And I was saving up for the new Chevy Nova that came out last year. The girl I was dating at the time 
was working too. And she didn't get off work till around 10 or 10.30 that night. So as it happened, one weekend, we had the night off at the same time, and I had just gotten my Nova. So, we wanted to, you know, wanted to show it off and everything. And, you know, being a young couple, wanted to have a little time to herself. He said, we decided to go to the Chicken Mata Battlefield and just kind of hang out. Because that's, you know, it was usually pretty quiet back then. And it was real late and stuff. So, well, as we sat there, uh, yeah, I said, well, uh, as we sat there, as the night grew on, you know, we reminisced and talked and stuff and laughed. So we was talking about how eerie it was without the crowd of people being there, the general public. Well, she had scooted over next to me, and I put my arm around her. When out of the corner of my eye, in the rearview mirror, I see a set of glowing green eyes. I jerked my head around and looked, and they were just staring at me menacingly and piercing. I suddenly felt the emotions wash over me of dread and strangely, sadness. But what had me the most was absolute and sheer terror. I screamed, which in turn scared my girlfriend as she screamed, not even knowing why. But I turned around, started the engine, dropped it in gear and punched it. We headed out of there, spinning tires, throwing grass and gravel. We was going down the road, which is limited to just a few miles an hour, but we was going wide open. Looking in my rear view mirror, the green eyes is still there. And by that time, my girlfriend had turned around and saw them too. When we got to the exit, they had vanished. But needless to say, we didn't slow down until we got near town. The end. Wow. Uh, the, the green eyes tale, that's, it's a lot of people have seen it. Heck, I, I think I've seen some video. People have gotten videos of two little red dot, or sorry, green dots out in the yeah. darkness out there in that battlefield. I mean, yeah, there's, I've there's seen a lot of stuff on that. Yeah. Uh, it's wild. Have you ever been out there? I have not. I've always wanted to see it, but like I said, I definitely, I have not, not been able to get there yet. It's, uh, it's in Tennessee, but closer towards, uh, Georgia, right? Right. Okay. I think LeBron lives somewhere near there. So he, he's been to it a ton from what he said. Right. And I guess from your uncle's story, it's still not clear, you know, what was it? Is it a cryptid? Is it a ghost? Who knows? No telling. I don't want to find out either. <laughs> <laughs> Is that his disembodied head floating around as a ghost? Right. But yeah, like I said, I've heard different things say that, uh, well, I've heard one story that said that, uh, like you said, you know, he was, he's going around, he's trying to find his head. Uh, I've heard another story say that, uh, uh, he was on his, he couldn't wait to that afternoon or after the battle to get back to his lover and he was killed before then. So now he searches the battlefield for her or, you know, something like that. Mm -hmm. There's a bunch of different stories with stuff like that, especially yeah. when it comes to lore, but yeah. Well, it's definitely a cool story. Um, definitely. So if you've got a story that you'd like to get featured on Spooky Appalachia, you can email us at uh, spookyappalachia at gmail.com. It's uh, scrolling in the ticker down there if you didn't see. Um, oh, and uh, we'd like to thank our Patreons, Adam, Alvin, Charles, Chris, Danielle, Donald, Jeff, Joni, Jordan, Julia, Linda, Misty, Cheryl, Taylor, and our content creator Patreon, Scott, 
he's an author. You can check his link in the description. Werewolf Radar is a uh, awesome comedy podcast, paranormal comedy. Be sure to check them out. Link below. And of course, our very own Jared King TV link also in the description. But definitely check Jared out. He he does some awesome stories, just like me. I mean, if you liked what you just heard, definitely check out his channel. Um. Oh, and if you'd like to support Spooky Appalachia, jump on that Patreon. You know, absolutely, um, folks. Grab it up. Also, yeah, yeah. Also, we're getting real close on those view time hours, so keep playing the playlist. Absolutely. Uh, have your friends share it out. You know, have your friends watch it. Even if, you know, you're busy or something like that, a lot of people may not be watching it thinking, you know, they have to be right there. You know, you do not, folks. Just let it play. Yeah. It's real. It's getting real close. Uh, can't wait to, to get the YouTube partnership. Uh, it's really just kind of a, a it's going to sound silly. It's kind of a life goal bucket list type thing for me. And man, you've come a long way, man. Such a short time, dude. I man, I am so proud of you. Happy far oh, you brought the channel, man. Thanks. Yeah, it, it seemed. I think it was May that I, I was at two. No, one thousand hit one thousand back yep. in May subscribers, and then just a couple of weeks ago, uh, while I was at the Mothman Festival, hit uh, two thousand. Absolutely. Yeah, that's just a couple of months. That's, yeah. It's crazy. But, uh, the, yeah, thanks for sharing this story, Jared, and coming on and reading it for us. I thought, who who else would be the better, I mean, you know, it's your uncle's story. I thought right. you, you, you should be the one to tell that one. Well, thanks so much, man. Like I said, it's always an honor and a blast to be here. Well, I love having you on. Thanks so much, man. Hey, folks. Welcome to Spooky Appalachia. Uh, this week we have a fan submitted Mothman encounter story from Cairo, West Virginia that happened, uh, July 17th in 2022. Um, the fan found us through our, um, Mothman sightings Facebook group. If you're not on there, make sure you hop on there. That in our spooky Appalachia group um the fan's name was natasha and this one was particularly interesting because it's a uh, recent mothman sighting that took place in uh, west virginia and uh, she says that her friend got a photo of the creature which is uh actually a first for us so without further ado Let's get to the story. I've seen, seen a few people make posts looking for something fun and scary to do. So what better time to tell you about our trip to Cairo, West Virginia the other night. First, we stopped off at the old school to take a quick tour inside, but we were chased off by bats. So we went down another road, which ultimately got us lost and scared that our vehicle would roll off the hill. Well, that didn't stop us. We continued out to Silver Run Tunnel 19, but instead of walking, we decided to drive through. Upon coming to the opposite end, we looked over at a picnic tail and saw what looked like two bright red lights on top of the table. The odd part was the lights would appear and disappear. So two brave souls from our group got out and took a look at them. They actually picked up two tea candle lights that were sitting out, but they were so cold and had never been lit that they couldn't use them. So they kicked the candles out into the woods and we backed the heck up and sped out of the place. And then we decided to stop in the middle of the tunnel and turn the lights out while my son-in-law and another fella got out to check things out. We locked the doors and decided to speed off just to mess with them a bit. 
But then my son-in-law came hauling butt back to the vehicle and starts begging to be let back in. Once again, these two red lights followed us into the tunnel. Mind you, there were six of us, and we all watched these lights blink like they were eyes. And then that's when I decided to step on the gas and book it the heck out of there. The even crazier part was, is uh, when we got to the bridge to come across back into the little town, we stopped and suddenly you could hear the loudest scratching sound coming from outside the vehicle. Of course, we all say, what the heck was that? And we sit there for a minute. My son-in-law got out and looked all over the vehicle and underneath there was not a branch stuck, a twig or anything in the road. That's when my friend caught it on camera and took this picture I've sent you. And to beat it all, this was only the second most creepiest encounter we had at Silver Run in Cairo. I can definitely say I'm done with that place. Now let's see if we can, uh, the photos over on our website, SpookyAppalachia.com. Let's see if I can present that. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. All right. Nope. Hide. Okay. So here it is. You can see it. For a better view, you might want to check the uh, website, but um, let's see if it'll zoom in any. No? Oh, well. Um, yeah, just to show you, it's there. It's up on the website. I can link it in the description, but I thought this was really cool because... We, somebody sent a picture. We've had tons and tons of Mothman sighting stories, but never a picture. This time we've got one. I'm not saying it's real or fake, but uh, it's something, and it's interesting. So let me know what you think of this story in the comments, the photo and all that. Um I thought it was definitely an interesting story. Some of you guys might notice it's an older story that uh, Phil told back when he was still around. Um, I'm in the process of uh, either retelling these stories or having the people that uh, experienced them on to tell the stories. I guess when I can't, when I don't hear back from them or I can't get a hold of them, I'll go ahead and uh, retell them like this one here. Um, I hope you guys like that idea, but yeah, I figured it'd be a good way to retell some great stories we've had in the past. Um, yeah, thank you for listening. Uh, if you're new to the channel, make sure you, uh, subscribe and everyone else, make sure you like and comment and share this one out to all your friends. And, uh, I thank you bunches for listening in and hearing me jabber, and uh, I'll catch you in the next one. Welcome to Spooky Appalachia, everybody. I'm Jimmy. Uh, joining me is Moth Mistress and uh, Steve Ward, our special guest today. Nice to be here. So I know Steve from the Mothman Museum, where uh, he works. He uh, He's done uh, 50 years of research into the Mothman incident. How are you doing today, Steve? Uh, I'm beyond wonderful, in fact. That's great. Um, so I guess let's say hello to a couple people. <laughs> Gosh, there's a bunch of people in the chat. It doesn't tell me how many people are here. Uh, hey, Julie, James, LeBron, Dark Maiden. Hey, James. Did I already say hey to James Boggs? <laughs> 
Teresa's here. Listen, it doesn't matter. You don't have to be stingy okay. with Hayes. Hello, everyone. Okay. Welcome. Yeah, hello. I'm glad I, you're I just here like to, to talk see. about Mothman. Oh, it says 10 people watching. Wow. They're all on YouTube. Nobody's watching on Facebook. Whatever. <laughs> That's where we want them. Don't worry about the um, stats. So we're going to uh, be doing a little bit of a dive into the Mothman today with uh, Steve here. Steve, I've, I've, everybody I know tells me you're the guy to talk to. Um, I've known Jeff for years. I doubt I'll ever be able to have Jeff on. <laughs> you know Jeff. <laughs> um, so I met you about half a year ago at the museum, I think it was. And I no, I hadn't just started this, but uh, we talked about you coming on. And now we're finally doing it. Um, so I guess let's get this started. Um, Mothman, um, I guess how, uh, well, I know how it started, but, uh, for everybody else, um, I guess, wh how would you say it got started? The, well, the, the, the first major sighting, uh, was the, the infamous one where the two couples were chased out of the TNT area by a winged humanoid. Now, the, the TNT area, for those who don't know, uh, lies about nine miles north of Point Pleasant. And uh, it's, uh, it's been nicknamed the TNT area for decades. Uh, during World War II, you know, you can, you can Google the, uh, this area, the TNT area. Uh, the, uh, I, I don't even know the proper name of it, but something Ordnance Works. It's a wildlife preserve. It is, now it's, it is. It's, it's an eclectic wildlife area. Yeah, but yeah. During World War II, they manufactured explosives for the war effort. And they stored them in a uh, hundred of these concrete bunkers or igloos, and they covered them with foliage so it, it would look like terrain. If the enemy ever came in this far and flew overhead, it would just look like countryside. So, uh, and that didn't last very long, just uh, during the war effort. And then everything pretty much was torn down. The old North Power Plant still uh, was uh, stayed up, but uh, uh, it just became an abandoned area. And by the 60s, it was pretty desolate. And now it's 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 really desolate. It's, it's a very creepy mm -hmm. area, especially at night, it, but even I, in the daytime. Yeah, I personally, I have never gone there at night, and I don't want to. <laughs> I, I've been there a couple of times, but uh, in, in one night, I even heard the flapping of wings. Oh, I was wow. About to go into the one of the uh, uh, igloos, but then I heard kind of a, uh, I'm not very good at doing bird calls here, but uh, <laughs> sort of a, and it turned out it was, uh, I had a recording of it, and uh, I had somebody listen to it that knows birds, and it was just some kind of a heron. So oh, I did okay. not encounter the winged Garuda, but he caught my <laughs> attention. I, I didn't even see it. It must have been, it was probably perched in the in the foliage by the opening of the, mm -hmm. uh, and, and so, but it, uh, it caught my attention for a moment. Uh, but uh, anyway, there are two couples uh, were driving around out there and uh, by the old North Power Plant. And uh, Linda Scarberry said, what's that man doing standing in the road? And that man spread his wings, about a 10 foot wingspan. And they noticed the red glowing eyes and it kind of shuffled off toward the old North Power Plant. Uh, after that, they took off into town and this thing uh, followed them over, over their car. Uh, they saw it uh, when they pulled out of the, uh, the area and went south on Route 62, which takes you back into Point Pleasant. Uh, they saw it by a, an old billboard. So they didn't know if it was the same one or not. They thought maybe there might have been more than one. But uh, this thing followed them into town to about the city limits. And they ended up going to the police. Uh, he uh, they separated the four people the, the, of the two couples. And they all told their story, wrote, wrote out their story. Um, so uh, that's kind of really how it started. I, I, was, in, mm -hmm. I was in junior high. Uh, in okay. Michigan at the time. And this thing hit the wire services all over the world. And if you look at the museum put together by Jeff Wansley, you can even see the article in the Stars and Stripes, the military newspaper covered this incident. So that that's what set it off. And this is even before uh, Mothman got his name. He was just the bird mm -hmm. at that time. Yeah, now, I think the, the newspapers actually gave him that name. Well, there was a uh, some unknown creative copy editor, we assume, uh, dubbed him Mothman. The Batman TV show was popular at the time. Mm -hmm. So it was probably just a play on Batman. He really didn't have uh, much to do with a moth. But right. uh, 
uh, there, there was uh, you mentioned off air there was a uh, there was another sighting a few days earlier in Clendenning, uh, the cemetery, uh, of some kind of a bird-like creature. It's not, uh, you've got to imagine how creepy this is. You've got grave diggers out there, and they see this uh, this shadowy whatever it was, whether it was the Mothman or just a very large bird, I don't know. But that had to be a little bit creepy, like mm-hmm. some kind of an omen. And that was actually out near uh, um, Braxton County, wasn't it? Just uh, it, was, I, it was a couple hours away. I don't, okay. I don't remember exactly uh, uh, where it is. Uh, I just cannot imagine making that police report. Like, yeah. you got to walk into the station and be like, hey, guys, listen. I got this thing I want to tell you about. <laughs> well, they, they actually didn't go there first. They, uh, Linda was working at uh, Chinese restaurant, Chinese drive-in restaurant. And that, uh, that area now is it's, it's Village Pizza, which uh, <laughs> has a Mothman pizza, mm-hmm. by the way. But oh, back yes, then it was yes. Chinese, yep. And uh, there was a famous Mothman sighting that took place over Chinese. But anyway, oh. that's the first place they went. They were, uh, her boss was just about closing up. And they, they banged on the door. They told him what happened. And he's the one that encouraged them to go to the police. And he, I think he called the police ahead to tell them they were coming. So, uh, but yeah, that was, uh, I guess they were pretty shaken up. And, uh, you know, there's one other thing Jeff uh, Wamsley told me. He was contacted by a woman that had been a nurse at the local hospital there. And she said that two women were admitted uh, late that night to be treated for shock. And this is something he hadn't heard before. He had talked to Linda many times about the incident. So he asked her a few years ago and uh, he said, Linda, would you and Mary treated for shock? And she said, yes, we went there later that night. So that's another sort of cooperative incident to pull it all together. I had not heard that. That's, wow. Um. What about the 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 uh, eye infections that uh, were in the Mothman prophecies? I don't remember hearing a whole lot about that in actual cases. Is, did well, that... the conjunctivitis is something that yes. uh, has, has often happened to people that have had a close sighting of a UFO or, or some strange light in the sky. Mm-hmm. Uh, even John Keel got that once with a close. Uh, he was. Uh, out in one of the hollers one time and with a, a real close sighting of some kind of a craft or something. And he got that. Now, one of the original witnesses, uh, Connie Carpenter, was driving by the Mason County Golf Course. And she saw this thing standing there uh, with the red glowing eyes. It took off straight like a helicopter and flew over her. The next day, she developed conjunctivitis. Hmm. Now, Keel said that he found that the people that had uh, close UFO sightings or cryptid sightings, sometimes they would suffer the same elements, uh, physical elements like thirst, muscle ache, and even conjunctivitis. So it was kind of unusual uh, that a cryptid, per se, would cause this, but not, uh, it does happen, apparently. So Mm -hmm. Keel was drawing the connection between what we think of as two different types of phenomena, but but people were suffering the same ailments in some cases. That's so, and that's what, so normal. It's completely non-related. I'm sure those things have nothing to do well, with each other at all. Well, I've so talked weird. to a lot of paranormal researchers who uh, who believe that all this stuff is related. UFOs, spirits, cryptids. I mean, I've never really formed my own opinion on it, but I, it's something I, I've heard many times. Well, maybe that's the goal of the channel. You know, you collect all of this information, start and, to see how the pieces line up. I mean, what do you think of that, Steve? You- well, that's what that's what uh, originally I did think all these things were completely separate. And I had read some of Keel's stuff before, and then he came out with a book called UFOs Operation Trojan Horse, where he starts to pull all these things together. Uh, UFOs, cryptids, uh, psychic phenomena, poltergeist phenomena, and uh, I kind of came kicking and screaming. You know, I, in mm-hmm. fact, uh, a friend of mine and I were kind of bad mouthing Keel before we'd actually read the book. But what, what do we, what does he think he's doing? You know, we might as well just give up. <laughs> and so once I started to read it and, and saw his arguments and the evidence, I began to see why he was uh, 
uh, you know, putting these things together. And uh, it's, uh, it, it gets a lot deeper than that. But uh, Trojan Horse is a, is a really is the book that, that really changed my thinking. And then, you know, I was in probably in therapy for a while after that. And then I read Jacques Vallée's uh, Passport to Magonia. And uh, then I was I had to be in recovery again because uh, these two men, those two books, really completely changed my view of the paranormal. Uh, Jacques Vallée gets into uh, uh, a lot of uh, various traditions and folklore, and talks about uh, some modern day UFO experiences and the parallels between them. Uh, in other words, uh, the old stories about the well, the the fairies, the leprechauns, the elementals. Mm -hmm. Um, they, uh, you find things like missing time, you know, mm -hmm. what's common in those stories, as well as modern day UFO experiences. Uh, sometimes even the, the, the entities, the, the, uh, the elementals, if you were to uh, change out their little red cap and green tunics for a little silver suit, sometimes they would look almost identical. Right. Uh, but there were, there are many, many, many parallels. Uh, so anyway. Uh, yeah, I think, although, you know, Keel did not believe there was one answer to these things. Uh, he kind of rejected the extraterrestrial hypothesis by the end of the 60s. But later on, he backtracked a little bit and thought that perhaps, you know, uh, some of the uh, some of the phenomena was due to that. But uh, he, he was more, uh, you know, he was uh, he would see if, if you try and catalog all the different sightings, you know, how many different types of craft are reported? How many different types of entities are reported? And this is kind of before the greys kind of came in and took over. But there are so many different types. He he thought it, it might be uh, unlikely that we're being visited by, you know, uh, hundreds and hundreds of different civilizations, that maybe there was some other answer. Um, mm -hmm. He also talked about uh, some of these things maybe even being temporal constructs, uh, transmogrifications of energy. That's one of my favorite words, wow. by the way. Uh, <laughs> Said without a single stutter. Way to go, yeah, man. I well, be well, the only other place I, I've read that is in Kelvin and Hobbes comic strips, where he gets out his oh, transmogrifier. Remember that? <laughs> yeah. uh, but uh, he thought that some of these things, they were... Uh, they were paraphysical. They were they were actually would leave could leave footprints or whatever, uh, and have a real effect on the environment. But they might be temporal. Uh, he talked about paranormal mimicry. The if you if you go through the the history of UFO sightings, uh, you know the strange lights in the sky were seen as sometimes they were witches riding on their brooms carrying their yep. lanterns, uh, mm -hmm. or fairy lights or whatever. We had the uh, mysterious airships for a while. We had the ghost flyers. We had the ghost planes. Um, the you know, Phantom had, Blimp in Point Pleasant. I heard about that. Yeah. Um, so uh, he thought that perhaps some of these things were sort of reflective. And it, it seems like these things were always, you know, even with the mysterious airships, that they were always ahead of our technology. They were ahead of any Zeppelin or dirigible that was uh, available. So Anyway, there's a lot more. It's very hard to summarize Keel in a yeah. few paragraphs, but <laughs> it's uh, you know he. I think he he was about a hundred years ahead of everybody in in, in uh, outlining some of the stuff, and and also the uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Stan Gordon, uh, uh, Silent Invasion. There was a wave of UFO sightings in uh, Southwest Pennsylvania, 1973-74, and uh, in conjunction with Bigfoot. Uh, very strange Bigfoots, by the way, that didn't seem to be able to be hit by bullets and we didn't disappear in a flash of light. Um, so there's just a lot of uh, a lot of mysteries there. And I don't, wow. don't I don't think we can e easily as nice as it would be to separate everything into nice categories. It doesn't always seem to work. Oh, man, I'm so obsessed with Bigfoot Generation 2. That, what is that? That no, I'd so heard cool. of the Bigfoots, but not the UFOs in Pennsylvania around that time. We yeah, did were... have... Oh, that oh. is one thing that uh, people don't realize a lot, and you don't hear about, talked about a ton with uh, like the, the average people, is uh, the UFO sightings that were going on at the same time as the Mothman sightings in Point Pleasant. Right. They, they were just... Uh, I, I wish I could have been here at that time. Uh, John Keel, 
uh, actually the the TNT area got so crowded there were lines of people driving in there every night. And these uh, these guys were out there with their shotguns and bow and arrows because <laughs> they were going to bag themselves a Mothman, right? No, yeah. no, uh, my boy. Oh yeah, I had heard about <laughs> no. that. No. So they uh, Keel and uh, some of his and, and um, Mary Heyer, the uh, friend and colleague. She was a reporter. A stringer for the Athens Messenger, and she she wrote a column called, uh, uh, let's see, the where the waters mingle, and she's the one who covered uh, Mothman sightings, the Men in Black, UFOs, and so forth. Well, they found an area uh, if you go south of Point Pleasant to Gallopolis Ferry, and way back on the Hollers, man, imagine what it was like a half a century ago. Uh, you can get lost back there today, pretty easily, and. Uh, uh, so and they, they found a particular hill uh, the the farmer uh, up there would uh, go to bed early about nine and they'd sit up there and they'd see all these strange lights go over. So and uh, there was a, another family, the Lily family that lived on Camp Conley Road. Camp Conley is almost the southern border of the TNT area. They had all kinds of bizarre activity uh, over their house and they even had uh, sort of the bed, a bedroom apparition of a man in black inside the house. I heard about uh, that. And uh, that was and actually it, one of the things I was going to ask you about is if right. you had heard of it, but it sounds like actually it was in Kiel's book, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The Lily family had a, a, a great deal of activity. You know, some people called it the uh, injured cold encounter, which was another thing that was going on um, around the same time, I believe. Right. Injured cold. He had actually, the uh, Derenberger's uh, encounter happened just before the outbreak of the Mothman sightings. And um, it, it was bizarre. You know, the uh, Derenberger seems to have embellished things as time went on. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> it, it, did, it, it did seem like there was something to his initial experience. And uh, that was, uh, he's driving along Route 77, uh, this elongated craft comes beside him and uh, kind of uh, edges him off the road. And this gentleman comes out, very strange dude with his hair kind of slicked back. I, I think he had some kind of a, uh, a silvery outfit on. And uh, his his arms were crossed. And he uh, has this conversation with Derenberger, a, a really pointless conversation. I mean, if, if this guy's uh, an alien from another planet talking to an Earthman for the first time, it was a pretty mundane conversation. You know, he asked about, uh, uh, you know, who he was and what, what are those lights over there, which was the, I think, Parkersburg. Um, just very odd. The thing is, the thing that gave, that Keel gave some credence to it is that before that, there was another man on the same road had reported the same kind of experience. This is before Derenberger uh, got on the news and blasted about his. And this guy... Uh, he was uh, with a with a buddy in the truck and uh, had a you know this guy didn't identify himself as Indrid Cold, but another pointless conversation. So this guy was freaking out. He said, "I've just got to tell somebody." So he contacted Mary Heyer and John Keel, told the story. He was going to come forward and then decided, "No, we're we're not going to uh, we're not going to do it." And uh, and uh, he said, "You know that scientist fellow said we should just forget all about it." And Keel said, what signed this fella? And he said, well, I, I don't know. He seemed like he knew what he was talking about. And we said, well, how did he find out about your sighting? He said, damned if I know. And that was <laughs> it. So Keel dropped it because it would have been a blind item. You know, nothing, mm -hmm. nothing. And then a few days later, uh, Derenberger came by with his story. And then some months later, there was a woman over in Gallipolis that had a, a similar experience when she was leaving the uh, hospital she was working at. Uh, she saw one of these craft over the parking lot late at night and saw these two men, uh, sort of men in black type or injured cold types, whichever you prefer, another pointless conversation. And she was kind of in a trance. And uh, so I don't know what to make of it. Um, mm -hmm. it. It suggests it was something to it, but I, you know, I, I don't know. And then later on, Derenberger talked about visits to Lanulos with the oh, uh, yes. in inhabitants that don't, didn't wear many clothes. And, uh, you know, too, too bad he didn't take some video. I mean, he could have made yeah, a few points yeah. that. Um, I've heard stories that his daughter um, 
still says to this day that uh, injured cold visits her like he shows up at her house and watches TV with her. <laughs> well, it, yeah, she uh, uh, Tanya, she actually just passed recently. Oh, really? Um, okay. Yes, yes, it was just just recent. Um, I uh, I don't want to speak ill of her. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I don't. Uh, I I think maybe some of that was embellished. I I know some people that talked to her years ago. And then I said, did she remember anything about those days? And she said, no, I was three years old. I don't remember anything. So that's just a different story. So I, yeah. I don't know if, you know, I don't know what to make of that either. But. Right. Well, it's kind of fascinating on this topic of like everything sort of being related and Mothman potentially being not necessarily one entity, but like all of these things being a collective entity. Uh, Jared actually asked a question oh, uh, to yeah. Steve, and he said, in your opinion, do you think Mothman could be associated with death or possibly a warning for people to be watching or something bad to come? It, um, what's that again? If if he... If like, if Mothman or, you know, the, these different things that uh, kind of all seem somewhat related, if not connected, directly like could they be associated with death or you know a warning for other people oh yeah um, omen? well a lot of people think mothman was a harbinger um mm -hmm. i i you know it i, I don't know some people think it, he caused the bridge disaster others think he had nothing to do with it um my, my problem with harbingers is couldn't they be more specific you know uh not to be tongue-in-cheek but you know, you get this uh, this apparition or this omen, and then eventually the bridge collapses. But nobody knows what you know what it means, and so it's it's not helpful. Um, it's also hard to say because you know we have such a small sample size of data to go on here. You know, it's you know a one entity showing up and one incident happened. Mm -hmm. Well, also, uh, well, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, you know, it's it's not a whole. I, I don't think that's a lot of data to go off of. That type well, of thing. the 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 Mothman prophecies, the prophecies part of the book, that dealt with uh, John Keel being in contact with many of what he called silent contactees. These are people that firmly believed they were believed they were in uh, in contact with some kind of an entity space brother or whatever and they were getting sometimes they were getting prophecies they were uh, getting information that would come true in some cases oh and that uh and for a while for a long time there was this buildup. there were these different uh contactees who were told supposedly that there was going to be some big deal coming up and then that mm -hmm. it was going to be december 15th it was going to be an em effect whatever that meant and I think it was going to be uh, power outages, uh, three days of darkness, and uh, maybe an assassination. Just a lot of things. And by this time, uh, Keel bought into it hook, line, and sinker because so many of these prophecies were coming true. Now, he thought that it, it might be a, uh, uh, a power a plant uh, might mm -hmm. be exploding on the uh, Ohio River because there was going to be something to do with the Ohio River. And so... And then that night, he was actually in New York when the Silver Bridge collapsed. It was uh, December 15th, just after 5 o'clock. And he's there, he's white-knuckling it because, as he said, he got extremely paranoid. And uh, because of all the experiences outlined in the book, Mothman Prophecies. And then, you know, oh, and it was supposed to happen the moment that President Johnson lit the Christmas tree at Rockefeller Center. Well, the Christmas tree lights go on, nothing happens. Uh, Keel breathes a sigh of relief, and then the bulletin comes over that a bridge collapsed between uh, West Virginia and Ohio, and he was he was infuriated. I mean, some intelligence, something new, something was happening, mm -hmm. but it was a complete deception. It, it didn't help anybody. It didn't save any lives. Right. So, and that's you know, a lot of. Uh, I'm reading a book called uh, Hungry Ghosts. I can't remember the name of the author. But he gets into the uh, mediumship and the uh, a lot of the messages that come through, and how so many of them are accurate to a point. But then there's a certain point 
of deception or tricksterism. And that seems to hold true here too. So I, I caution people to, uh, to be very careful if you've got certain, I don't know, guides or you're doing kind of channeling to be very cautious about buying the whole scenario. But mm -hmm. uh, so that's, that's what happened uh, with the bridge collapse and the deception that was involved. Didn't the contactees uh, predict uh, some mass UFO sighting too? I think it was in Washington, D.C.? Um, that I don't remember. I know that uh, there was one, I think he was a uh, professor at the University of Michigan, and he was one of these that got several accurate predictions. And then came the big one, get everybody together on the hill. The, the world's going to end and the Space Brothers are going to pick you up and take you away. And of course, the Space Brothers never showed up. Fortunately, yeah. Uh, yeah. the world didn't end either, but I think his job did at the university. Oh, gosh. Yeah. So, so that's, there's a, a lot of stuff like that that, that ha happened. And uh, uh, that, that's what Keel would call false illumination. And he was, he was in contact with so many of these people. And he got, for a while, he was getting all kinds of bombarded by all kinds of information, even when he was up in New York on, on Long Island. I think I read something that his uh, phone bill had uh, quadrupled or something like that. Yeah. Well, part of that was because it, it, you don't, you know, the Mothman prophecies, uh, half of that was cut out by, as Keel said, faceless editors. Some of it mm -hmm. was salvaged in the Eighth Tower, which is another great book, a follow-up. Uh, but uh, yeah, he started getting all kinds of uh, harassment from the IRS and the phone company. And uh, it turns out there was a, uh, in a collection called uh, The Great Phonograph in the Sky, he, uh, uh, there's an interview in there where he talks about how around that time, he had written a critical article about J. Edgar Hoover's FBI. Well, about two weeks later, a lot of this harassment started. So it wasn't the curse of the Mothman or anything paranormal. It was probably old J. Edgar with a bug up his rear. <laughs> so, but all this, all this, you know, it, with all the, the legitimate weird stuff was going on at the same time. Uh, the chapters in the Mothman prophecies is paranoiacs are made not born. And uh, when he was interviewed by Art Bell, when the movie came out, he said the one thing that the movie really captured was the paranoia that he felt at that time. I haven't watched the movie in a good while. I should probably watch that again sometime. You know, I got a chance to talk to Richard Haddam recently, who was the screenwriter. Oh, uh, nice. Great guy. Yeah. It was really, really fun to talk to him. So, I kind of like the, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go. Oh, do you want to go ahead? I've got a bigger question. I think. Oh, possibly. Maybe. Well, I was just. I was thinking, like, if if you go on the theory that you know some of these things are uh, trying to communicate, like harbing, like they're calling them harbingers because they arrive, or some of their prophecies come true, some of them don't, that sort of thing. If if these entities are beyond whatever we can understand, or they're obviously, you know it's supernatural, it's paranormal, all of that, it might be difficult to accurately communicate. Like if we're, I'm trying to communicate with a cat, I don't know how much is actually getting through to that animal mm -hmm. and so somewhat the same way. So I can see how people would interpret some of those things as like some, some indicators, but being misconstrued. In other words, it was more of a, uh, more uh, these messages are coming through kind of a filter that we can't quite grasp and maybe it not it's an intentional deception yeah yeah it's gone uh, through a bunch of swiss cheese to get to it, us sure and, and it, by the time it comes out it's mothman right. the thing you know thing about mothman was you know if you go by the descriptions he was about uh six seven feet tall man-like humanoid uh red glowing eyes, 10 foot wingspan. The behavior was bizarre. It didn't always flap its wings. Sometimes it would put its wings behind it and take off straight like a helicopter. Uh, Keel got a couple reports of people that were in close proximity to it where it, it sounded like it was some kind of a humming noise or something mechanical. Um, uh, and one lady said she saw it 
walking like a robot in the TNT area. Hmm. Um, on the other hand, uh, the, uh, the Greys, uh, they were uh, missionaries, and they, uh, they had this apparition of the Mothman appear in their bedroom. I mean, it was a classic Mothman, but it, you know, didn't, uh, didn't come through the door. It was just there. And they, they took it, uh, you know, in the context of something evil. Well, they had left, they left the next day uh, at some far off country as missionaries. They came back several years later, not knowing anything that was going on, all the hullabaloo in Point Pleasant. So they came back and they saw the newspaper articles. They thought, my God, that's what we saw in our in our bedroom. I talked to another woman that had an experience like that. So, uh, you know what? And, but he seemed to leave footprints by the TNT area. Uh, you know, mystery piled on mystery. What what is he? An apparition? Uh, something physical? Also, a large number of people that saw the Mothman had an outbreak of poltergeist phenomena when they got home. So I had heard yeah. that too. You know, how do we reconcile all that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there were a good number of people that had poltergeist activity. I had heard. And that was it's an interesting thing that's not talked of about a lot. And then um, one thing I was going to mention was that we talked about it uh, before. Um, I'm not going to say any names on stream, but um, I've talked to a couple people in Point Pleasant that said, People have been seeing something like a bird, bird man creature in Point Pleasant for many years before this all even happened. Yeah, I'm not real familiar with a lot of the sightings, but there there have been. And there's a book called um, Oh, come on, don't fail me now. I, uh, you're a plethora of information, sir. I think you should yeah. get cut yourself some slack. Yeah, uh, James Gay wrote a book on. Uh, Appalachia, I forget the exact title, but uh, he talked about some birdmen that were seen uh, in the <clears throat> around uh, the Elk River, around the Elk River Valley, uh, around World War One, and they had uh, kind of a reddish plumage, twelve foot wingspan, man like heads. Uh, people were keeping their children indoors for a while, and uh, uh, there's a uh, now before that. Now this is. Probably no connection at all, but uh, in 1904, several years before that, on the Elk River, there was another bridge collapse. Uh, oh, really? And both the Silver Bridge and the Elk River Bridge were, took place on December 15th. Huh. Now, I that's never... just weird. Yeah, that is very weird. Um, I had also heard of in the 1950s, it may have been in Virginia that a uh, pastor had a sighting. I forget where I read this. It's hard to tell, but that, that's another one I had heard of. But yeah. Um, and I've also heard of people mention uh, it could be connected to the uh, Native American folklore, the uh, Thunderbird. Yeah, the Piazza Bird. Is that a, just another name for the Thunderbird? Yeah, there's, there, okay. there's a big uh, sort of a, not a mural exactly, but if you go down uh, uh, southern Illinois uh, by the uh, the, the uh, Mississippi, um, on, on the rock, you'll see this huge painting of the Piazza bird, which is a, another Thunderbird. Now, that's a, that's a good point. Um, there are many... You know, was, we made uh, the uh, when people start saying uh, saying about well, Mothman was seen here and there. I don't know if that's the case or not. You know, the mm -hmm. Mothman seem to be kind of exclusive. Although, if Keel's right and these things are sort of manifesting out of the, I don't know, the Phantom Menagerie, maybe these things just take different forms. But you know, we had the uh, a few years ago we had the Wisconsin Man Bat, very different looking thing. <laughs> A, a father and son saw it. It hit their windshield. They got real sick afterwards. It was real mm -hmm. hideous looking, large bat-like thing. There was the Houston Batman back in the 50s. Um, that there's all kinds of uh, winged creatures or apparitions that have shown up. There's one, the closest one to Mothman was seen almost three years to the day that the Scarberries and the Malice were chased down Route 62. It was in Kent, England. 
and some uh, kids were coming back from a dance and they saw this uh, light come down behind a grove of trees and then another light kind of manifested and then I'm not sure if it morphed into this thing or whatever, but it looked like the Mothman. I mean, it <laughs> shuffled like the Mothman. It had the bat-like wings. It was, you know, as Mothman, a lot of people thought he looked kind of headless or the, the eyes looked like they were down in his chest. And so now this thing did not have red glowing eyes. But other than that, he was uh, almost a carbon copy of the Mothman. Yeah, that what sounds that's very... Now, it's, it's, poss it's interesting because Paul Devereaux wrote a book on uh, Earth lights, I think. No, Earth energies. And uh, he, talks, he talks about proto-entities. Very interesting idea because there's a lot of, a lot of uh, sightings where people will see a light or something that looks like a craft come down and it morphs into the entity that is seen Ooh. afterwards. Uh, there's, you know, he gave a lot of examples. There was a, uh, on the Isle of Skye, the last century, the, the, the guy is out on the cliffs and he sees this light coming in from the ocean. And it alights on the edge of the cliff, morphs into a woman holding a child. She walks away and then disappears. Huh. Uh, some people in, uh, in uh, uh, I think, uh, Qu uh, Queensland, Australia, they were at a park. They see this globe of light and they see inside this it coalesce and morph into kind of an entity, a small entity. Um, and then there was a, a classic one, Nottingham Canal in the, the 1980s. These three kids, they, they saw the mist coming up off the canal. It seemed to coalesce into a couple lights and started moving toward them. They got a little freaked out and started to run away. Two of them saw it more morph into sort of the outline of a Bigfoot-like creature, although it was never distinct. The third kid, while he saw the lights in the mist, never saw the form of the Bigfoot or whatever it was. So anyway, just an interesting idea of these mm -hmm. cultural entities where the, and I've heard other stories too, of people seeing creatures or, or something like in a ball of light being carried along for a while and then stepping out of it for what that's worth. But uh, very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of the Mason County spook lights? Uh, I don't think I have. Well, that was one I read about in a book. I forget the name of the book. I can send it to you later. That uh, um, there, gosh, it may have been 1700s. There was a uh, there was a gentleman uh, going along the Ohio. He was uh, robbed and killed. Um, the robber buried the uh, the silver um, along the river, Mason County. He uh, Got into a, a battle. He joined in some battle uh, uh, on a fort, got killed. And then after that, uh, people started seeing a uh, lantern up on a lookout and uh, uh, a blue lantern. And if you went up there, it was a you would see this uh, spirit of a headless ghost trying to uh, find that silver. Don't follow the balls of lights, kid. Yeah. You just, I know <laughs> yeah, you want to see spooky stuff. I've never been fond of headless ghosts. So I, I can't no. tell you. <laughs> I would, there's yeah. A, yeah, there's a ch uh, conversation going on in the chat about like what you think your spookiest ghost is, like black-eyed children or f uh, women ghosts more than men ghosts. That's a good. That's a good question. What Who asked that? Uh, everybody's kind of. Oh, okay. They are that. talking about that. I can yeah. show that. That's a good so, one. Yeah, um, uh, I, for me, it would have to be the women in white. And uh, like I've discussed on here, I may have seen one before. I guess maybe that's why it creeps me out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I used to think that the black-eyed children were, you know, simply an urban legend. But, uh, you know, it, it doesn't seem like it. I, I you know, a lot of people have tried to suggest that somehow they're aliens or, or whatever. Whatever it is, it's just something very supernatural and, and very, very odd. Uh, I know that, uh, who is it? David Weatherly wrote his book on black eyed children. And, uh, and Nick Redfern has also said that oftentimes when he talks about uh, black eyed children or men in black, the, the uh, reception or the radio station or the podcast starts to go a little bit wacky. And then the same with uh, even people who were reading uh, uh, David Weatherly's book on black-eyed children, uh, lights would go out or flicker or, or whatever. 
Uh, fortunately, that hasn't happened to me yet uh, because I'll be le I'll be in the next county if it does. <laughs> but, uh, uh, so, uh, yeah. but you know, there, there's another winged creature we I should mention, and that is the Van Meter Visitor. Uh, I'll be actually emceeing at the Van Meter Visitor Festival in September again this year, and this is uh, uh, Chad Lewis, Kevin Nelson, and Noah Voss put together the book, The Van Meter Visitor. They uncovered this incredible series of sightings in 1903 in Van Meter, Iowa. Van Meter is just west of Des Moines. And this thing was more like a, a little more like a pterodactyl type creature, but several prominent citizens in town saw it over a particular week. And, but it had very odd features. At night, on, it had a horn on its nose, but it also had a light uh, that it shone from its, its the horn or, or whatever. And hmm. also, uh, there was one sighting where he, he was in close proximity of this guy, and it exuded some kind of a, a vapor. Uh, insert your own joke there if you want. But the point is, this guy lost his memory temporarily. It was like uh, missing time, really. So you have this, this creature giving off a light and, and, and responsible for missing time, like some of the entities that show up. Uh, out of uh, landed UFOs. Um, uh, also, but it did seem to be physical because one one person saw it sitting on top of a cell phone, telephone pole. And, <coughs> and you know the way a parrot will come, will climb down a, uh, uh, I don't know, a rod or whatever using its beak and mm -hmm. its legs. That's what it did. And then when it went to go take off, it was really had to get the, the wings flapping to get, uh, um, to get airborne suggesting that it was a physical creature. So uh, anyway, that's just another one, one of the variety of, uh, of entities. And uh, it wasn't seen, uh, actually two of them were seen near the old mine shaft. And uh, they think disappeared into the old mine shaft back then and was never seen again, except one person in the 1980s saw some kind of a winged creature out that way. So there's another one for you. Uh, you know, popping out of the Phantom Menagerie and then just sort of melting away. Hmm. I actually have one, uh, a recent one. I guess I can read this off. Um, it was sent in by a fan who, uh, this one actually sounded a lot like Mothman to me in the, in the description. Um, she said it was a winged uh, humanoid counter. I just thought this would be a good time to bring this one up since we're talking about... Uh, other winged creatures. It was in uh, North Carolina back in 1983, Watoga, Watoga, North Carolina. I, I'd never heard, I've heard of Watoga, West Virginia, not uh, Watoga County, North Carolina, but uh, she said that she was driving uh, a Volkswagen Beetle with, um, no, not with her sister, but uh, to visit her sister in Silverstone, North Carolina. Um, off Highway uh, 421. Uh, she said she was around 18 years old at the time. She stopped um, at a stop sign uh, where her headlights were shining directly ahead at a barn. And this is when she saw this creature. It was uh, a winged human-like creature running along the front of the barn. It uh, was about six to seven feet tall, dark. Uh, with two arms and legs, huge wings. The creature looked like it was part man, part bird, and it appeared to be wearing combat boots. And uh, she said seeing it scared her. She sped off from the, the, the stop sign. And um, after this, she noticed the creature was following her. Um, and she was questioning what the heck she was seeing. She heard the flapping of wings. And uh, looked to her driver's side mirror, and she could see that the thing was almost uh, on top of her car flying uh, overhead, following her. And she estimated that uh, she was going about 45 to 50 miles an hour on a very curvy road. Um, and this went on for a couple of miles. And then eventually her engine started sputtering and uh, seeming uh, her, her, her battery seemed to have died. The headlights started dimming, and um, she kind of blacked out. And um, after this, uh, she came to, she had traveled a pretty good distance, and um, 
she didn't realize this, but uh, she got to her sister's, which was normally a 20-minute trip, but uh, it took about four hours, she said. So she had experienced time law. And uh, that uh, kind of matches up with some of the uh, UFO encounters. I thought that was an interesting one to bring up with the, the winged creature. Well, I have to say the, we the, the combat boots uh, threw me for a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, he's, you know, he's sometimes he's got a look. He's trying stuff out. Uh, <laughs> but but there's other interesting things. There are uh, other close proximity with cryptids where vehicles have stalled. Mm -hmm. There was a, a classic case. Uh, it was a W.D. Doc Priestley. This is about 1960, I think. He's cruising along a two lane near Marlington, West Virginia, along the state forest. And all of a sudden, his car stalls. He's he's uh, following his buddies and they're in a hunting bus and uh, his car stalls and he looks over to his left and he sees a classic Bigfoot standing there. And the Bigfoot's hair even seems to be slightly standing on end, like uh, static electricity or something. Huh. So he he says he, he doesn't know how long, how long he, he sat there looking at him, but his, his buddies recognize he's not there. And so they, they're, they're coming back. The Bigfoot hears the, the bus coming back and he recedes back into the forest. So this guy's car, he can start it again, doesn't say anything about what he saw. And so they start up again. I don't know how far he gets, but the car starts to shake and smoke and stop again. And his engine is actually burned out. And he looks over to his left and there's the same Bigfoot or his kissing cousin standing by the road. Now, he doesn't say anything about this for months because he wants <laughs> yeah. to come back to this area and hunt with his buddies. And he thought, uh -huh. if I tell them I saw a Bigfoot, they won't come back with me. <laughs> so he, he eventually spills the beans. And so, and there's a, there's a few other, even Stan Gordon got a couple uh, in, uh, during that 73, 74 period where the close proximity of a Bigfoot seemed to have something to do with a car stalling. Now that's unique. Like mm -hmm. I can see, I can certainly see other different types of cryptids and describe things being Bigfoot though. Like that's, that's given off energy. I wouldn't have seen, but if they're all somehow part of this, that would well, make sense. Perhaps. Yes. Perhaps if it's, if it's, if it's different, if it's sort of constructed in a different way, you know, the, uh, the Bigfoots in, in Pennsylvania in the early seventies, were, were just bizarre. Uh, there was a woman that heard a, uh, a ruckus on her front porch, thought dogs were getting into her trash again, and she opens the door, but she got her shotgun. She's going to shoot it in the air to scare the dogs away. And she sees, now she doesn't know anything about a Bigfoot, so she sees what she uh, thinks is a big gorilla on her porch. Oh, and she God. shoots it point blank. It disappears in a flash of light. Uh, there are other incidents like that in, in this area. Oh. On the other hand, you get other classic Bigfoot reports, say in the Northwest, that seem to be, well, that, that sometimes they have strange properties as well, but they seem to be very flesh and blood. Well, if Keel is onto something about paranormal mimicry, perhaps some of these things, UFOs, cryptids, are nuts and bolts, flesh and blood. Perhaps there is something in human consciousness that creates or helps project uh, this mimicry that is mm -hmm. sort of a counterfeit of the original. That way you could have both being true. Now, I have no idea if there's mm -hmm. any validity to that, but you know, you try, you try to listen to the experiencer and try and go from there rather than, than sort out. I mean, I'm, I'm tempted to sort out the, the combat boots part in the last story mm -hmm. because it just doesn't fit my paradigm. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, perhaps it was, you know, just misperception. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I've heard uh, even some uh, some of the uh, the very well-known Bigfoot people have gotten some really bizarre reports of things in the woods that they just can't wrap their heads around. Maybe it's more about what you're prepared to see than it is about what's actually in front of you in some of those cases. Well, you know, um, 
uh, a man named Evans Wentz was a, a theosophist, and he went through Ireland uh, around the turn of the last century, wrote a book called The Fairy Faith of Celtic Countries, and he collected reports of people that had encounters with the elementals, one-on-one -on -one encounters, like we go out to talk to people about Bigfoot and UFOs. These weren't just stories handed down from generation to generation. Well, uh, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, who uh, was, of course, the author of Sherlock Holmes, very much a paranormal investigator, wrote a book called The World of the Fairies. He says, he sounded very much like John Keel. He said, the appearance of the fairies is partly dependent on the observer. And I thought, is that interesting? This is like a hundred years ago. Mm. Wow. So perhaps in some of these cases, some of these encounters are dependent on the observer. That, you know, I would like to believe that, but I have yet to see my my boy in real life, so they need to be getting to get. And apparently, he's been spotted flying around here before. So, yeah, I believe that somebody sent me a sighting near you, actually, not too far mm -hmm. from you. Mm -hmm. Was that the one you picked to read, or is it? Uh, uh I had not selected one just oh. yet. <laughs> okay. Oh, I don't have the scripts. I guess well, I have the. Oh, website. it's they're on the website, spookyappalachia.com. That's true. You know, and there's also a Patreon that I would go amiss without mentioning that you can subscribe to for more bonus content. Oh, who said that? I dropped the thanks, like button. Thanks for doing that for us. <laughs> um, well, Keel uh, thought that uh, certain people were tuned in. Uh, you know, certain people, and he would, he would, if if you had an experience. He would find out all about you, you know, he would find that people that had, say, an abduction experience, missing time or whatever, if you asked the right questions, you'd find out they had all kinds of activity going on all their life. Mm -hmm. uh, people, uh, I talked to a woman and I, uh, that she and her husband had some missing time. They saw this large black triangle on their front porch, standing on their front porch. And, uh, uh, so I, I asked her a whole series of John Keel questions, and it turned out they were having haunting experiences in the house. She'd seen shadow people. Um, the uh, Her kids were seeing orbs, and her mother and sister-in-law on the property had seen a crypt, strange cryptid that looked like a panther standing on two legs. Now, if I didn't have the John Keel background, I never would have been able to ferret out these answers, these questions, because... Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, I would have thought, well, gee, I hope you uh, have some luck finding out about that missing time. And I would have just missed the, the whole, all the, the, all, all the unusual stuff underneath the surface. Wow. And do, you, do people share stories a lot with you? Well, um, this is, uh, this was a, a woman that uh, uh, she'd had this uh, experience. And uh, she had that time she'd been trying to find a a therapist where she could retrieve these memories. Mm -hmm. And so she saw my uh, stuff on Facebook. And so she contacted me. So we had uh, a couple long conversations on the phone. I, and she was on my show. The uh, I do a, I do a podcast called The High Strangeness Factor on the Paranormal UK Radio Network. And uh, so uh, we, we were able to, uh, you know, really delve into uh, the uh, um, these things. And, and again, I... Uh, these are, are, are people like, and, and Rosemary Ellen Guiley was another one. She was also a kind of a Keelian. And uh, from her and from John Keel, I learned, uh, you know, how to uh, approach a lot of these other questions. Oh, sorry. We had a question. Um, Queen Laura asked, uh, can what I type? ask, can you see that, Steve? Or? Yes. What, oh, okay. What, what, what type of, okay. He would, he would ask, uh, if you had any strange visitors, you know, it was kind of the shades of the men in black or whatever. People would have strangers show up after a UFO sighting. He would ask if there had any electronic problems in the house, strange phone calls. Um, and, uh, you know, if, if you had uh, seen, maybe seen a UFO, he might ask you if you'd ever seen some kind of a, a strange cryptid or, or, or an animal you couldn't identify. Um, and, and also he would ask about uh, things like uh, uh, paranormal phenomena in the house, uh, hauntings, that sort of thing. 
So just the, the whole array. And he would often find that the individual had had a whole series of these things happening sometimes all their lives. Mm -hmm. And I, I have found that, you know, my limited uh, questioning people, I have found people that had abduction experiences had also seen a Bigfoot at one time or another or some kind of a unknown creature. Hmm. Now, I'm, I, I'm the guy, I mean, I've only had maybe one weird experience. I, I'm the guy that nothing happens to. You know? <laughs> I, I don't get to see UFOs. I'm kind of glad I, I don't get to be abducted as far as I no. know, uh, even though there's no uh, copay or HMO, you know. Um, yeah, there's mostly just a support group. Yeah. Well, I get that, though. I, I mean... There's are there are theories about like depending on, on your willingness of interaction or your openness to it, like if you can see those different types of things or even recognize it. Like a lot of people would dismiss a ghost story as something oh, sure. because of you know practical reason, blah blah blah. Whereas if they were in the moment themselves, they'd be like, "There's no way," you know, mm -hmm. I, "I was there and I felt it," and that really is uh, really makes a big difference, I think. In, accepting and listening to these kinds of things and and then putting those pieces together like has been done apparently a hundred years ago in some cases yes so um one thing one thing i wanted to say is uh, if anybody has any questions uh for steve or for us uh post them in the chat um uh, Steve, did you want to maybe talk about a, another maybe uh, not so talked about Mothman encounter that took a oh, place in Point Pleasant that you could think see. of? Or well, I uh, I just had uh, Linda Sigmund on my show. It's not hasn't uh, been available yet, but uh, she was 16 when all this happened, and she was uh, about 12 miles north of Point Pleasant. And she was out with her boyfriend, and uh, it was, uh, they, they saw this uh, strange light. This is one where there, there's a, a light uh, scene, there's a Mothman-like creature uh, a scene. Uh, they had some missing time. Uh, she has a, has kind of a memory of looking down and seeing two big feet, sort of like maybe a Bigfoot feet, but not seeing the creature itself. Uh, she saw the, it was, it was all kind of uh, jumbled together. She saw this uh, winged creature take off and this light at the same time, and very quickly, I mean, she didn't see this creature for very long. And so all this stuff happened in, uh, well, in a brief amount of time, but there is, they, they both had some missing time. So it was a very sort of a uh, nebulous, uh, hazy experience. And, uh, and then um, the, uh, this is uh, oh, April before the bridge collapsed in 67. And then in November, no, Dece early December, she went into Point Pleasant and she saw this strange looking man in dark suit, black fedora, dark sunglasses at night, standing in front of this building. And then she looked over and she saw another man down the street a little ways that looked identical mm. to that guy. And I thought, holy cow. And she didn't, she did not put together. She didn't know what to make of this. When she passed by them, she thought the skin looked like it had an unhealthy pallor, as, as many of the men in black are reporting. Something not quite right. Well, she had no idea what this was until some years later, she read John Keel's book, The Mothman Prophecies. And she thought, oh my God, I saw classic men in black. So they didn't talk to her, they didn't, didn't approach her or anything. But uh, so that was, uh, yeah, she was uh, had a very strange experience, very credible lady, by the way. And she's also having uh, what, seemed, what seems to be a, a lot of Bigfoot activity near her home. She's somewhere near Parkersburg out in the country. And, uh, you know, she hears uh, uh, noises and, and, and uh, knocking and all kinds of stuff around her property at night but hasn't really seen them something to be aware of my goodness i've actually heard some knocking in my woods before i i don't know 
<laughs> you're you're in the zone though. You're in. Uh, in yeah. The zone. I mean, I haven't gone to. Inv- I take my dog out right before bed every night, and uh, one night I did hear some knocking. I did not go investigate it though. No, smart man, and that's why you're here on the stream today. <laughs> Heck no. <laughs> it's uh, not a I problem. Mean, you've got a co-host. You know, if we, uh, if we miss you. <laughs> Uh, me going all right so uh jimmy's supposed to be here no the the dog was <laughs> acting weird uh, i mean more than likely it was probably a deer or something i have so many deer out here but it was very very strange jared king says that uh it was just him saying hi <laughs> <laughs> It is so cool to see how much uh, Mothman, like it started as, you know, all these incredible origin stories. And then now Mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, from the, from the sculpture itself to the festival that Jeff puts on, like it's Mm -hmm. just developed in this great thing. Oh, I, I absolutely think uh, it would, we have to mention the moth cam. And, oh yes, the oh. moth cam. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I get to, I get to work Saturdays at the Mothman Museum. And I, I, I greet people. I, I ask them, uh, is this their first time at the museum? Uh, and where are they from? And was it a planned destination? Uh, <clears throat> a couple of weeks ago, had a couple of gentlemen in from Ireland that came here purposely to see the area. Oh. So we had a great talk. We, we talked about the Banshee and so forth. And uh, oh, we, wow. get, we get people from just all over the world. Well, I spent a lot of time going out to the Mothman statue, and I will help people if they want their their picture taken by the statue or their entire group, I'm glad to do so. And, and I have a I have a name tag on so they know I'm legitimate and that's the <laughs> homeless guy that wandered in looking for food, okay? So uh, now a lot of them don't know about what they'll see if they walk behind the statue. And uh, uh, <laughs> it is, is his rear end. It's his backside has become maybe as, as popular as his front. They call it the shiny hiney. Now, we don't know what Bob Roach had in mind when he <laughs> did that, or if he talked to any witnesses that got that close to give that description, but people always get a kick out of it. A lot of people don't know, um, you know, that it's back there. So, and people laugh and they'll, uh, people will... <laughs> People will slide their charge cards through there. They will put quarters back. Oh, there. yeah. Oh, yeah. I wonder where I, they got that I idea. started that. Um, <laughs> they Steve, will... I don't know if you knew, but I, I made uh, a YouTube video uh, a couple of years ago, I think it was, that if you sl- uh, put a wad of cash or my friend slid 20. his uh, credit card, I said that it was the key to immortality <laughs> and that I was actually 300 years old and go do that every couple of years. I, maybe I accidentally started that. Who knows? Well, I, I just tell people they better check their bill when they get home just to be safe. Uh, but uh, people slap it. People do things I can't repeat out loud. I'd be oh, yeah. <laughs> now, now, once they do that, they'll take their picture by it and they'll be laughing and, and, and do those horrible things. And I'll say, I'll point up by the, there's a man in black watching everybody yep. from the second story window. There's a mannequin all dressed up with a fedora and the black suit and dark sunglasses. It does freak some people out. And then I tell them, you see that little black dot up there by the man in black? That's our 24-7 moth cam. So that means people right now all over the world on the internet just saw you slap Mothman's caboose <laughs> or take a picture of Mothman, you know, whatever. So they all, all get a good kick out of it. And then uh, they usually start acting up in front of the camera. <laughs> Did you know there's actually two cameras? Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. There's one that uh, comes out of the bathroom too. Got that oh, double yeah, angle. You, you know that. <laughs> but yeah. uh, yes, you could. Yeah. You can go to the bathroom there uh, if the executive. Sleeps no. Um, when I first the, uh, started uh, that, people were complaining. Um, that there wasn't sound, and now uh, and uh, Jeff sent it to me. I was like, I think they don't really want sound there if they knew where I was coming no. from. <laughs> what, what are you? Uh, no. Gosh, oh man. No, what I should do is talk to the the what what's the scoop people and see about possibly getting um one set up over there that points right at the honey. That would be cool. That would be that. <laughs> That would almost have to be its own channel. No. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, because when it gets more popular than the original, 
you'll, you know, lose a little faith in humanity. So you got to at least make it an option. It'll be rotating cameras or something. Like you know, the truth is revealed in the end. <laughs> <laughs> the truth, is, the truth is revealed by the end. You know, I actually remember uh, before the shiny honey was a thing on the internet. I don't know what started it all, but I remember I was there with my wife and we were walking around the statue. You know what? I've got a miniature one right here. Jeff gave me. Um, oh, very cool. Yeah. Yeah, yes. it's got the honey too. Oh, but, Fallout uh, 76 honey. Yeah, it's the Fallout 76 one they used to have at the store. Uh, Steve, I don't. Do yeah. they still have it? I don't remember. I, I don't know. I I, uh, I think they think they may they may have one up there still. I kind of but, really like that depiction. The statue. Yeah. Depiction. The the wife and I were walking around the statue, and then I noticed the honey, and I was like, "Is it supposed to be like that?" I think <laughs> I think he modeled it off of a bodybuilder. Well, I have the classic statue that's an actual replica of the. Uh, original nice. that's nice. something i've never been able to I, I saw one at one of the festivals one time for 100 bucks and i've been kicking myself for oh, wow. years for not getting it yeah. that thing is awesome i've seen one or two they actually have one at the museum too i believe some friends of mine surprised me with, with one 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 year that's a nice surprise yeah mm -hmm. did we have any questions come in on the chat i don't think i've seen any uh, no i don't think so but that's all right Taylor, did you want to read that one story off? Or? Well, yeah, I can actually read one off. Uh, the uh, one that I really like is a, from December of 2022. It was a Christmas one, and it was oh, in that one. Point Pleasant. Because, um, I mean, where, where else but Point Pleasant, right? That's where the festival is going to be. I think that's September 16th and 17th of this year. It's, it's, the, uh, it's always the third weekend in September. Mm, sweet. Oh, man, I can't. I got to make it out. I got to make it out sometime. It's just such a shame. Uh, yeah, but this one was from Point Pleasant uh, in December of 2022. Uh, and it talks about, let's see. Uh, so me and my cousin Marcos were in Point Pleasant, West Virginia area visiting family. We were driving down Redmond Ridge Road at around 930 at night, sometime around Christmas. We passed a human-like figure as we slowed down. We looked out over our rear view mirror and what we saw was a large figure about six and a half to seven feet tall. As me and my cousin rolled down the window to ask, is everything all right? All of a sudden, our reverse light caught a glimpse of a large beaming eyes looking our way. My cousin told me to floor it and we got out of there. We took a off down the road and after going a few minutes, everything seemed normal. Until a little bit later, when everything had calmed down, my cousin Marcos looked to the right and noticed a large creature flying almost directly over us. We were going about 30 miles an hour and stepped on the gas as we hit speeds of 45 to 50 miles an hour. The creature was still following us with ease. With the windy back roads, it was pretty hard to go much faster. After about two minutes of trying to outrun the human-like creature, we got on the county route of 175. At that point, there was no one behind us. I've never known about this creature until I went to visit the community. I'm not sure if I'm crazy and my eyes were seeing things, but I would like to know if anyone else has experienced such things or if I saw the Mothman, which that story is kind of pretty much to the T what yeah. Mothman's going to do. It's Maybe it's kind of like a cat following a laser pointer. Starting to think that he sees the headlights and then he's like, must follow, must go. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know what what rules or what laws would govern these experiences or manifestations. I, I really don't. Do you know where that area is that they were talking about? I That might be where, I thought that might could be where uh, you were talking about uh, Mary's uh, UFO sightings near that farm. Mm -hmm. I was wondering if that was Yeah, it seems to same that. kind of speeds and everything. So they either go... UFOs either go incredibly fast or they can only go 35 to 40 miles an hour. <laughs> I'm, I'm figuring, I'm figuring out game. Okay. I just think, it, I just think it's so neat. Um, there was a, there was actually a very popular like D and D podcast series that featured cryptids. And one of the things that I thought was cool and I hadn't really seen it before was 
they had Mothman as a character, but Mothman's name was Indrid Cold. And uh, That's weird. so it, he he had like a, a regular form and then would mm -hmm. become the Mothman and also had those Oracle like abilities. Uh, but the thing about him was that he couldn't like quite see the future. He could only see bits and pieces could only communicate so much and hmm. i i kind of liked how like during this conversation it was coming up in the back of my head because it brings it all together you know the the film they tried to uh, uh did kind of a shorthand where they implied that uh ingrid cold and the mothman were the same thing mm -hmm. they did didn't they they did yeah I, 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 I saw I, it as a kid. I remember watching it and the, the, the you know the phone calls he got. I'm here. What was it he said? I'm <laughs> no, please try again. Yes. <clears throat> what was it? I I'm here or something like that. I, I can't remember. It's been a long time since I've watched that movie. I may have to ask a third time, but that's all right. That's good. Or what? Gosh, sorry, <laughs> I, I can't remember. That. It was it was no, pretty was good. Done. That was good. Richard Gere was very good in that role. And uh, it was mm -hmm. actually, I think Mark Pellington was the voice of Indrid Cold, obviously distorted. So it was the director talking to uh, to uh, uh, Richard Gere in that in that part. That was, by the way, remember the character of Dr. Leek, the, uh, the professor that he goes to see in Chicago, who's written the book and has been through all this before. Uh, it was played by Alan Bates. Anyway, Dr. Leek, that's Keel spelled backwards. Oh. And, and when Keel saw it, he said, you know, he reminded him of him. He thought Bates was right on the money for, for kind of getting his, uh, his uh, personality down. That's so huh. awesome. Oh, we do have some questions I'll show. Um, yeah. I'm not sure if this one, who this one's directed towards. LeBron, if you're. Still around. Um, um, I mean, I guess I've I've had three ever. I think my uh, my favorite one was the one that got uh, got me into all this paranormal stuff as a kid. I had a uh, what I guess was a UFO sighting. My entire uh, elementary school class saw it. Uh, I was on the, I think the swings. Okay, he said it was all three of us. I was on the swings. I noticed a sphere um, off in the distance, like up at the top of the mountain near us. Um, it was like hovering over a tree, kind of dark gray, and it just sat there. Um, and I, I started telling people, hey, what, what is that? Or asking and uh, the, like a whole crowd of us was looking. Then the teacher came and uh, she was confused by it. Um, and uh, she went and got somebody that got some binoculars and uh, we got a closer look at it. It was kind of a metallic -y looking thing with the, uh, it had like, I don't know what you would call it, like roofs. I don't know. The whole thing was weird. Um, it always stood out to me because the teachers were confused about what it was and it got me looking into this stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know when the adults are panicking. Yeah, that's that's, that's why it stood out to me. That's probably my favorite experience I ever had. It you know, it sparked all this. I think the uh the one of I guess I guess yeah the favorite experience to put it that way uh, was when I was at uh, one of my jobs uh, and the reason this is one of my favorites is because there was someone else there and so it, it wasn't just me uh, you know we both heard the same thing but uh, where I work there's a very distinctive floor sound like when you walk on this floor you can hear it you know what it sounds like um, but it was just me and the person who works behind the desk and we were having a conversation. And both of us at the exact same time turned our head because we heard someone walking on the floor and there was no one there, but both of us were like, you heard that, right? I heard it. You heard it. You heard it. I heard it. We heard, we both heard it. Um, and much to the chagrin of the owner of the place when he got there and we're like, Hey, don't freak out. <laughs> Uh, because he's, he's like, oh, great. There's now, now I got to deal with ghosts on top of everything else, you know, but, 
I just, I, th I think about that sometimes. And I was like, no. And the admin is a really practical person. So we both heard this. So mm -hmm. it's kind of like you said, it's really nice to have that kind of validation. Mm -hmm. I uh, mm -hmm. one and only experience. Well, it, maybe I've had one and a half experiences. I don't know. <laughs> but I went out into the TNT area, first time alone one night, just to see if I had the metal to do it. And uh, I was, you know, I had my uh, my flashlight and my recorder. I looked like a real paranormal investigator. <laughs> And I, I went into one of the igloos and took some video. On the way back, down was down Route 62, I experienced a couple flashes of light, like a strobe, and then another one and in a really dark spot of, spot of the road. And I thought, what where did that come from? And I wasn't didn't have the presence of mind uh, to try and figure out where I was on the road so I could come back the next day and, and look to see if it was something mundane, you know. Anyway, so I get back to my motel room. It's across the river. And keep in mind, nothing happens to this kid. I opened the door, the TV set turned on by itself and then started flipping steadily through stations. And I thought, no, no, this doesn't <laughs> happen to me. So I did what any intrepid paranormal investigator would do. I unplugged the TV and went to bed. So, now, postscript, <laughs> a, year, a year later, same month, I'm in the, the room next to that room. I'm crammed in there with a couple of my buddies. This is John and Tim who fly the Mothman by night in the TNT area during the hayride, during the festival, Aww. and portray the Men in Black by day. Anyway, so we're crammed in there. They're talking. The TV set turns on by itself. It's another one of these older style TVs. And uh, the next day, Tim and I went in for some reason. The TV set turned on by itself and then flipped through a couple stations and stopped. So we tried to get scientific that time, you know, uh, using the remote through walls and uh, all that, nothing. Okay, the final part of this is a few years later, the next room over, it's a corner room, and uh, two of our friends, two couples uh, were there with us at the Mothman Festival. And they have a, a TV that's uh, more like a smart TV. And so they're having trouble with the volume. They, the volume keeps getting lower and lower and they keep turning it up and then all of a sudden it starts blasting. So they have to go through this again. And then uh, on the on one of these nightstands was a, a pop can or soda can or something. And all of a sudden it flew off the table and hit the floor. Mm. So, and that was it. So uh, my theory is I brought something back with me from the TNT area. And fortunately he's still there flipping channels because he didn't come home with me. Was it, it. The hotel wasn't the low, was it? No. <laughs> okay. No. I, I know uh, uh, somebody that has seen an apparition in the low. Oh, really? Dave, you should uh, you should tell these people to share their stories with me. Um, yeah. well, I can tell we, you, this, we, is a, this is a pretty good one. This is Robin Bellamy. She was a Mothman witness when she was 10 years old. And uh, she was. Uh, this is at the 2006 Mothman Festival. She went into her room. It was unlocked. And she sees a man standing at the window, looking out the window, saying something about his boat coming in. And she just thought it was somebody from the festival who got lost or something. Oh. And then she noticed his legs didn't go all the way to the floor. So she's inching back. She's got a camcorder on the table. Remember camcorders? Mm -hmm. And she's trying to get it into her hands. And, of course, he vanishes. She, uh, she researched a book uh, about the haunts of the Low Hotel. She found this guy's photograph. In the archives, he ran a boat up and down the, the uh, Ohio River. The captain, yeah, crazy. So, nope, she did the right thing. Back hey. away, kids. I'd <laughs> love to get some stories from these folks that you've talked to. I don't know if you knew, but we mostly run on uh, people's personal encounters. But yeah, that would be really cool. Uh, Julie Stump has. Ah, yes. Question. Julie, I had something else I was going to say, and I can't remember what it was. I'm looking for Julie's question. How far back was it? Not too bad. I saw it pop up. Ah. In between a Jared sandwich. <laughs> Does there seem to be any particular times of year or type of weather going on that's common with the Mothman sightings? That's a really good question. I Not that I'm aware of with the Mothman sightings, although Keel seemed to uh, think that uh, a lot of times these types of phenomena would manifest during uh, thunderstorms, lightning storms. Huh. So 
Um, I mean, there's even uh, apparitions of the Virgin Mary during thunderstorms. Um, so, but it, but it is there are there do seem to be patterns. Uh, Keel thought that uh, uh, when he when he uh, uh, back in the '60s he subscribed to every clipping service possible. He gathered all kinds of UFO reports. He found that for some incredible reason they seemed to peak on Wednesdays, and then oh, I remember off that. Week. So there do seem to be patterns. Now here's here's a really weird one. There's a man named Ahmad Jamaluddin. I don't. Uh, he's uh, written many many articles for the Flying Saucer Review, which was a great British uh, uh, UFO publication. He wrote a book, something about uh, sixty years of suppressed evidence and about humanoids. He chronicled, you know how you know it, people that that see humanoids. That, in other words, landings, uh, close encounters of the third kind, where some kind of an entity is seen in conjunction with a craft. So. He plotted those and he found that the worst time of day to see, have an experience is noon. The best time is like 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. Not only that, but in every time zone, suggesting oh. that the point of manifestation or the point of entry is fixed as the earth turns. Is That's so bizarre. And uh, he's got, a, he used the database he used was from Albert Rosales. Albert Rosales uh, has about 15 books out called The Others Amongst Us, Humanoids, The Others Amongst Us. He has an amazing, amazing database that goes all the way to, from 1 AD to the present of other beings, other entities. And he also uh, talks about humanoid migrations. He found that these, these, uh, migrations, or out, out, I call them outbreaks, uh, go in like eight to 10 year cycles. They seem to, there'll be a, a, a flap of humanoid sightings in South America, and then they'll, they'll work their way up maybe a couple years later, somewhere in North America, US or Canada. Then it goes across to the UK or the continent, Europe, and then it hit uh, Malaysia or, or China or, or somewhere over there. And it seems to loop in eight to 10 year cycles. And uh, uh, so that's also fascinating. Why, why should that be? So now one thing it does suggest is that people aren't hallucinating or just making <laughs> stuff up because right. people don't uh, hallucinate in cycles. So I know, mind blowing. Yeah, yeah. The, the book is, wow. is like this thick and uh, it's just, uh, it's very interesting. I, I know some other people that are using the same data to see if they come up with the same results. So uh, it's very, very interesting the way he's applied uh, Albert Rosales's uh, database. Mm -hmm. My goodness, yeah. Well, I don't think I've seen any more questions. Um, Taylor, have you seen, I mean, uh, Moth Mistress, have you seen more? I have not, you've doxed me. Sorry, I'm so sorry. Yeah, you'll li I'll I'll live. It's not hard to figure out. <laughs> well, Steve, um, I don't guess I have anything else. My um, goodness, but I mean, it, like, yeah, yeah. thank you so much because there, you, I've learned so much in just such a short amount too. of time. Uh, yeah, it, like the past hour, it's we've been on an hour and a half, and it's just kind of flown. Yeah, <laughs> you couldn't tell me that. Well, to me, the, the most fascinating, you know, my, my area of interest are really these high strangeness areas like Point Pleasant, where all these things happen in the same place, you know, and why is that? I think that we might derive some answers if we focus on places like the Skinwalker Ranch, mm -hmm. like the Bridgewater Triangle, uh, the, the Bradshaw Ranch, and, and on and on. Uh, Marley Woods is another one. Um, but it's just fascinating to me that in the same place, people see cryptids. Uh, they see strange lights in the sky. They have, uh, uh, you know, poltergeist phenomena, trickster-like phenomena, uh, disembodied voices happening in their house. So it's endlessly fascinating, but I have don't have the answers. I've always heard, I don't know if it's an old folk thing, but uh, you, you, you get an area like that where uh, two rivers uh, meet. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever heard that. Yes, the confluence of, of rivers. And uh, people suggest that it uh, 
I don't know, steps up the vibration or the paranormal activity. And it may be true. And we we are right here, just as Mary Heyer's column stated, the where the waters mingle. And uh, mm-hmm. here with the Ohio and the Kanawha. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, I guess we do have one last question, maybe. Um, have you guys heard of Tug a Lou Park? I Negative I have. What is it? Tug a Lou Park? No. Yeah, I hadn't heard either. Looks like I've got work to do. But remember, kids, you can't just Google things anymore. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta do a lot more than just, oh, it's on the first page of Google. No, that's all sponsored ads. Well, now we'll have, we'll have homework for next time. Yeah, yeah. Thanks oh, to everyone in the chat too, by the way. Yeah, Appreciate thanks it. everybody for coming. Uh, Steve, big thanks. Um, mm-hmm. Like I said, I'm gonna send you one of our shirts for sure. Um, and if you want to send me a link. To your podcast i will put that in the description we get a lot of people that watch after the streams too mm-hmm. so they they'd be able to see that and i'll definitely check out your podcast okay i i'm not quite sure how to do that oh okay <laughs> but all i have to do is google uh my name of the highest strangest factor uh paranormal uk radio network i guess it's on a lot of different platforms i i'm uh i'm kind of a luddite i, I have to confess <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Not intentionally. Hey, you manage this. <laughs> it's pretty impressive. Did a quick search. No, I, hmm. All I'm seeing just on the quick search is I'll see if I can find it. Okay, should. And uh, link it for you. Uh, but, uh, oh, were you saying something? Yeah, I'm trying to think the main platform I'm on, and I can't think of it. We'll make sure. Well, if you do, just let me know. Okay. Um, And I will definitely put it up. All right, gang. Thank you. Hit the like. Hit yeah, subscribe. Yeah, it was a blast. Submit your submit your stories. Yes, if you 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 know if you've got stories, we do run off your stories. It's uh, you can send those to spookyappalachia at gmail It's down there scrolling, you know, at the bottom there. You know, we we all love stories. Be sure to send those in. And uh, thanks. I guess I'll go Thank ahead you. and Thank end this. Oh yeah, it was a blast. We'll probably I'll probably have to ask you to come on again one of these days. That was that was sure. great. <laughs> All right, people, see y'all next time. All right. I think we're live. Are we live? Yeah, we're good. It says we're, we're live, but are we yep. really? Are we are really? Sure? Though? I'm not positive about it. What about you folks? Can you hear us good? Give us a thumbs yeah, up. Yeah, give us a live. thumb up. Yep, yep. <laughs> so, Jared and I were talking. I still don't know if they hear us. <laughs> <laughs> Could be for nothing. <laughs> oh, LeBron says we are live. We are live. All right. So, Jared and I were talking. Um... Uh, I think I'm like 300 away from the full blown um, monetization, and he he talked me into doing this live stream today. Hey, Ada Cox. Well, uh, oh, let's say hey to people. Um, Myers hey, Paranormal. Hey, good to see you, Ada Cox. Good to How's see everybody you. How's everybody doing? Uh, scared witless. There's that queen lady again. We've got, uh, the man cave. How is it going, everybody? Did we say, oh, Moth Mistress? Did, we, did, we, did I pull Moth Mistress in there? I 
who else? I saw some. There was a bunch in here earlier. We got the the angry fella. Yeah, he's always angry. Yeah. Man cave, I believe. Uh, Debbie. Snow leopard was in the chat earlier. There was a bunch of people in here early. Mighty good folks. Rachel, how's it going? Carrie Newman. I believe that's ever. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I breathed in some water right before this. I was trying to guzzle down some water. All right. So <clears throat> we decided to do some post Thanksgiving cryptid stories. We hadn't done that in yes. a while. Yes. And uh, I pulled a couple. From our little database of stories. Whoa, 23 people watch a day. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, I added a new one that I was just sent yesterday. Yesterday? No, day before Thanksgiving. Yeah, day before, I think. Yeah. Betsy, welcome. Hey. No, I Betsy, think thank, you, kid, thank you, sister. Um, Everybody, make sure to like if you haven't subscribed and uh, get this shared out. We'll fill this thing up get that watch time absolutely I'm not cool. that far away um so i guess i can go ahead and get into it our first story is of a possible mothman sighting that uh took place in point pleasant west virginia Ooh. back in december of 2022 so about a about a year ago now yeah <clears throat> me and my cousin Marcus were in Point Pleasant, West Virginia area visiting family while we were driving down Redmond Ridge Road at around 9.30 at night. Sometime around Christmas, we passed a human-like figure as we slowed down. We looked in our rear view mirror where we saw a large figure. It was about six and a half to seven feet tall. As me and my cousin rolled down the window to ask if everything was all right, all of a sudden our reverse light caught a glimpse of large beaming eyes looking our way. My cousin told me to floor it and get out of there. We took off down the road. And after going down the road a few minutes, everything seemed normal. Until a few minutes later, when everything had calmed down, my cousin Marcos looked to the right and noticed a large creature flying almost directly above us. We were doing about 30 miles per hour and stepped on the gas as we hit speeds of 45 to 50 miles an hour the creature was still following us with ease with the windy back windy back roads it was pretty hard to go much faster after about two minutes of trying to outrun the human-like creature we finally got on country road seven slash five at that point there was no one behind us i have never known about this creature until i went to visit your community i'm not sure if i'm crazy and my eyes were just seeing things but i would like to know if anyone else had experienced such things or if i saw the mothman or if i was just seeing things Wow. Man. You imagine seeing something like that on the side of the road? No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Man. I know my me, and my me would not appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Man, so that was a good one, that. though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's been some good ones lately. Some really good uh, Mothman sighting stories. I'm, 
I feel like I'm really fortunate to have those. I've been sent those. I'm hoping I'll get more. I just got two more, actually, two more. One, I've uh, I hadn't gotten you know jotted down and stuff too well. Right. And then because sometimes you you know you you probably get these the same way as my, me. They send you a little bit, and you have to ask questions and get more of the story sometimes. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so that's where I'm at with the other one. This one is complete. That's well, cool. One, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm hoping. I, I hope I keep getting them. They're they're exciting to get. You know. Oh yeah, definitely. And you know, folks, you know, if you have any kind of experiences like the stories you hear tonight, be sure and send them into the email or the you know or just whatever you know. And like I said, we'll tell them. What do y'all think of the story in the chat here? What do you guys think? As in us? Well, I think we just said what we thought. Yeah. <laughs> we want to know what you guys think of it. Happy birthday to you. Oh, by the way, it's Jared's birthday. Yep, it is. It's my birthday, and this is the... Ready? First stream I've been on today for my birthday. I got a stream coming up, but it's the first one I've been on today. So glad to be he's here. Have, yeah, he's having a stream on his channel later. And uh, he's the pinned link in the chat there. So uh, head over to his stream later today, too. I think, uh, what time is it? Uh, it's uh, about three hours from now. Oh, yeah. Jeez. And it's already dark. Um, Crazy, huh? mistress. <coughs> yeah. Moth Mistress asked, is it just one Mothman or a whole race of Mothmen? I don't know. I mean, I, I think I got some sightings last year, some reports. So, I mean, one was in South Africa and then two weeks before that. No, it was actually this one. And then the one in South Africa, like a week apart from each other. Now, either Mothman right. could fly real fast or there's more than one. I don't know. Hard to right, say. but I don't know. It does make you wonder, you know, about mm -hmm. you know all these, you know, where they're so spread out all over the world. You know, is it just one or more than one? LeBron, LeBron definitely. Yes, send those in, man. Heck, maybe you can come on and tell one or two of them. You know. Yeah, for sure, man. If you want, um, I've had people coming on and doing their stories. Um, people are loving it. They also have been loving that Yowie story. It was doing terrible for some reason the first day. And then I didn't check it all day on Thanksgiving. Yeah, I did. I checked it. I think I sent you a message. It was about, it was getting, it was about bedtime. I looked and it had crazy view. I don't remember what that was. That yeah. Do you, Jerry? I don't know, but man, it, I said, I don't remember, but it, I mean, it just went boom yeah it's all i think it's at 600 now yeah doing really well all right shall i start in with the next one? Oh yeah all right <coughs> now this next one is a booger encounter you know an old wood booger uh some folks know him as bigfoot some people just call him an old wood booger but it so goes back yeah, they call it booger and wood booger over here where I'm at too. I guess they do in Tennessee as well. Is it is I guess yep. it, is it our part of Appalachia kind of thing or I believe it is. I believe it's just, you know, part of being in the mountains, you know, some folks call it I think the wood booger goes back to the older generations. Yeah. But like I said, the newer age, you know, new generations and stuff and everything knows it more as, you know, the the Bigfoot or Sasquatch and things like that tries to be more professional about it. But back then, the folks just called it an old wood booger. Where my dad is from um, in southern West Virginia, they called it um, Old Men of the Mountain. Yeah. But yeah, anyways, like I said, it has several names. Mm -hmm. So but, if you want to... Uh, <clears throat> yeah. Now, this one goes back to Wayne County, Kentucky. 
in 1930. He said, my Aunt Pat described being on the slope of a mountain digging ginseng. She was sitting down on the forest floor digging roots when something began to throw hickory nuts at her. At first, she thought that the nuts were simply falling from the trees. Ginseng traditionally dug in late summer when the red berries, you know, help in locating the point in the plant. She changed her mind when a nut suddenly shot by her head horizontally. Tell her story, she said, hickory nuts don't fall sideways. She thought that one, that one of her brothers had followed her into the woods and was a tossing them nuts at her in an attempt to scare her half to death, you know. So she called out, you ain't a scared me now, so stop it. While she scanned the woods, she suddenly saw movement. She said that a booger man stepped out from the tree and looked at her. She described it as being taller than any man she had ever saw. And it had long black hair falling down over its shoulders and face. She said that it was hairy all over and didn't seem to have any clothes on. She went on to say that she gathered up a burlap sack and the other things she had with her. Then began to move on down the ridge towards the old wagon road that would take her back home. And she described the quote booger man following her down the mountain making huffing noises. When she got to the road in the holler, she ran as fast as she could back home. She said that nobody believed her, and that her mama even spanked her for wetting her britches and <laughs> making up a story to cover the accident, telling her that she was too old to be a wetting her overalls. Man, oh man. I think that one came from Steve. Did that come from Steve? Um, or did he send it only to me? I started to say, I'm not sure. It just says a fan. I don't know. I thought maybe Steve sent that. I don't know. I don't think he's here. I hadn't heard from him lately. Have you? Well, he's been pretty sick. Oh, okay. Yeah, he had bad vertigo there for a while. Oh. I can't say for sure, but uh, I'm pretty sure that it was him. Oh, hey, Kevin. How's it going? Hey, Kevin. How's it going, brother? Good to see you. But that Perfect. was definitely a wild story yep, out there. Yep. And what I find really neat about the whole, you know, wood booger, Bigfoot concept is that uh, that them, I'm pretty sure there is more than one. Because yeah. folks have described them in different heights, different weights, different colors. It's no, there's no way it's just one. Yeah, and they're all over this area, all over the U.S. I mean, and world, really. Yep. I mean, we just yep. had a Yowie from Australia story, you know, which is the Australian. Yep. Variant. Hey, Debbie, how you doing, sister? But yeah, like I said, there's just so many of them all the way across the world, you know. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's many different names for them across the world. But it's basically all the same thing, a lot of them. Mm -hmm. Just different names. But yeah, like I said, I... Mm -mm, nope. Uh, I'd have done more than wet my britches. <laughs> <laughs> you got a couple of whoopings for that, wouldn't you? Oh, yeah. I'd have needed uh, that and a washing machine. <laughs> <laughs> but they, I don't even think they had them back then. Nah, they probably just had old rub boards and stuff. Mm -hmm. Go down to go down to the creek. Or they'd call it back then, a lot of times they call it a crick. A crack. My relatives <laughs> call it the crack. Not the crack. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I guess I can get into our next one. We're kind of blowing through these stories. I might have to do a bonus one or something. Yeah, I may have to, man. But like I said, they're really good. <laughs> yeah. All right. 
This next one, uh, it took place, I hope I'm pronouncing this place correctly. I get a lot of comments saying we mispronounce these places. You know, it, it's Man, I did the same thing. I, I mean, if you're not from there, I mean, come on, give people a break. You know, right, you know, some of these words, you know, I mean, it's like names, you know, I've, I have mispronounced so many people's names, it's unreal. I've had people mispronounce my name, you know, and it, it's just, it happens. <laughs> mm -hmm. So this is Erdell, North Carolina, October 2022. And it's of a possible Mothman sighting. <clears throat> so another one. Okay. Um. Good deal. It started in July of 2022 when we went to West Virginia State Penitentiary for a reptile show. We were maybe two hours away from Point Pleasant and thought it would only add an hour into our drive back home. So we figured we would drop by. On the drive, I started to get a headache. I thought it was maybe because shoot, I lost my place. <laughs> You're pulling my moves now, Jimmy. Yeah, I know. I thought <laughs> maybe because I was tired, but the closer we got, the worse I got. As soon as we got through the floodgates of town, I had a feeling in my stomach, like going down the first drop of a roller coaster. Eventually, I felt better, but fast forward a few months, I was walking to work early one morning, right before Halloween. It was still dark around 6 a.m. and I saw red circles in a tree and felt a feeling of dread. I thought maybe it was some Halloween decorations, but I checked the next day on my way to work and there were no red lights there. They haven't been there since. Then about a month after, <coughs> my dad passed away. So maybe it was or wasn't just a coincidence, but a warning. Ooh, <laughs> man, oh, man. You know, some of these stories, I mean, they'll just give you a downright chill. Mm -hmm. Keep an Appalachia. Where are you going? Oh, What's man. going on, Johnny? You know, we've blown through all these stories, man. We might have to <laughs> We're better than we thought website. we would. Yeah, we might have to pull up my website and find a couple more. I don't know. What do you think, Jared? Hey, may have to, man. Well, we may have to. Dang. I don't know. Do you want to... When I, when I read the next one, maybe look through the website, see if you can find another one or two you might want to read. I, I don't know. Well, uh, do you still want me to do the devil monkey one? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I've got the new one maybe i'll save that for last and we can find a couple more right all right that'll work we'll just get look under uh fan submitted sto stories i suppose all right and lebron had a yeah there's a bunch of encrypted ones up there at the top we can do but now, yeah go ahead and do that <clears> one <throat> okay now this one is one i i was really glad to get this one because it's really neat and it's something that you don't hear a lot about. And that's a devil monkey. And it goes back to April 2023 in Maryland. It says, I used to drive through the back roads in rural Maryland to get to my workplace in Carroll County. One morning, I saw something strange in the rearview mirror out of the corner of my eye. I had been the only car on the road for several minutes. And at first, I thought a car was suddenly tailing me. So I was very confused. However, when I looked fully into the mirror, nothing was there. At least not until I looked 
into the tree line. What I saw was very strange, and I can only describe it as an outline of a transparent humanoid figure swinging through the branches like a monkey would. It was so bizarre. I got this horrible feeling that I was being stalked. And I got the urge to step on the gas and just floor it the rest of the way to work. But I remembered hearing that if you see something in Appalachia, you should never acknowledge it. So I bit my tongue and calmly drove the rest of the way to work. And nothing happened on the way home. Man. Whew. Yeah, there was a there was a famous story um, that took place um, about an hour from me. It's where Phil, my uh, former co-host, um, lives, and uh, it was in the eighties. A woman from uh, I want to say West Virginia or Ohio was uh, driving to the beach. It was about 2 a.m. one night. She had her daughter in the back seat, and uh, this creature jumped out in front of her, and uh, it looked kind of like a a wolf-monkey hybrid. Oh, wow. And uh, she reported that it could jump about 10 feet. It jumped out in the middle of the interstate and then looked at her and then jumped off again. And then um, a couple weeks later, well, Jared, you didn't <laughs> have to do that. Got you back, brother. <laughs> Thank you. Um, a couple weeks later in Charlottesville, Virginia, uh, where, where my mom's from, um, uh, there there was a dog that, uh, or there was a couple with a farm, and uh, they said it was out at their farm. And uh, it got their German Shepherd and uh, drug it off. Oh man! So yeah. Um. Thanks, Johnny. Uh, I don't have a. I don't. I do uh, Patreon, not uh, YouTube memberships. I did Patreon when I started the thing. Um. Let's see. Where could we? Do find you have the option right now, Jimmy, to turn on channel members. I do, but I didn't want to do that and Patreon. I thought it'd be confusing to people. Yeah, like I said, they could do either one. They kind of give them a choice either way. Well, I don't know. Hmm. I'm not yeah, sure how that would work. If I, you know, I give, I, I hit the, uh, I hit the, put the videos out a week early on listed for uh, regular people. I mean, for right. the Patreons. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. It may give you the, yours? if you have a, if you was to turn on the option for uh, channel members, it may give you the option to set it for Patreon and members only. I don't know. I, that's, I might have to look at that. Uh, ditto with Mo what Moth Mistress said. Moth Mistress helps out here oh, too. Honored. And, uh, yeah. Moth Mistress, Jared, and, um, <clears throat> Who else? My friend April helps with the website. Uh, a couple of other people, but uh, oh, Donald! <laughs> How could I forget? Donald goes with me. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Um, he does a really good the, job too, man. Yeah, he definitely does. Um, but yeah, we've I've got Patreon. I could look at the YouTube members. I don't know. I, I don't know if I, my worry is I would just. Is, is it could be confusing to people, but my duder, <laughs> the thingy, my duder, the thingy, my yeah. uh, 31 people watching. Dang, when'd that happen? <laughs> oh, Johnny. Now, uh, Johnny actually does, uh, Stories too, Appalachian stories similar. His, his yeah, channel is actually an, more like Jared's. Than yeah, he's an amazing storyteller, like folks. Amazing storytellers. Yeah. 
Oh, definitely. I, I, you know, I got on the treadmill this morning. I thought I got a notification that he had a new, uh, new video. I was listening to it. I was like, wait a minute. I already, I already <laughs> listened to this one. But I, but I noticed I didn't comment it, so I, I listened and don't, again and commented it. What was that? One? It was his recent one that he put out either yesterday or the day before yesterday about yeah. the, the the guy that uh, may or may not have killed the woman, and they had the song. Yeah, about Tom him. Dooley. Yeah, I had heard about that. Yeah, he had to do a re-upload oh, on that. Oh, he had to re-upload it. That's yeah, why. Uh, they muted a few of the songs on it on the first one, oh. and he wanted to make it. You know, and where it, I went back and watched it, and where it, you know, took it out, it, the breaks in there and stuff, it, 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 it just took away from it. So he just he wanted it to. Uh, Johnny's like me, you know. He really wants the story itself to stand out when he tells it. So he redid it and then re-uploaded it. All right, that makes sense. Thirty-three watching. All right, so I pull, I pulled up. Uh, you break tripods because you don't pay attention to where you're walking. Well, anyways, um, I went and I pulled up another in Charlottesville, Virginia. No, uh, kind of live a little far away from Charlottesville, Virginia. I think it's. Hey, Abby, how you doing, Maybe sir? Maybe four hours. Hey, Abby. Thanks for coming by. Um, anyway, I pulled out another story. Jared, if you want to try and find another one, too. But this one, um, maybe you could do your uncle's uh, uh, green eyes story. But I'm doing LeBron's green eyes story. Oh, yeah. I, I could do that. Yeah, it's on the website too. I was thinking maybe actually, I can. I can pretty much. Actually, I can pretty much rough it. Uh, I got it pretty much remembered. Oh, okay. Uh, all right, so you want me to go ahead with it? <laughs> no, I was going to do LeBron's first. Wait, oh, did yeah. I just okay. go or did you just go? I think you, I just went. You just went. Okay. Yeah. And then I just kind of told one that I had heard of. That, yeah, okay. okay. Yeah, that's what threw me. All right, go ahead. All right. <clears throat> I was in middle school around 2001. My grandmother took me to the Chickamauga battlefield in Tennessee. We did it all the time when I was a kid. I actually still like to do it. She took me to go see the battlefield and check out the caves and stuff. We always liked going and looking at them. I had been really upset that day because my parents had gotten a divorce not too long ago. And I was still pretty sad and upset. My grandma had always told me that green eyes is attracted to people who are going through these types of situations where they're set feeling sad or depressed. We were walking. You always see stuff in the tree line and stuff when you walk around the Chickamauga battlefield for long enough. But we got to the dried up creek. We were going to look at the caves around there when we got to the dried up creek and we could see something moving towards the tree line. It looked kind of shiny, but it looked like it was made out of hay and had green glowing eyes. I'll never forget these those eyes. They were like two lightning bugs it looked up right at us then he kind of disappeared further into the forest my grandmother told me that we need to get out of there so we went back to the car and left it still kind of scares me sometimes being out in the woods especially when it starts to get dark because i know that's when green eyes will come out Thanks man for that oh man yeah man that was a whoo that was a spooky one no LeBron, what do you what do you think do you think i mean sometimes people oh, pe there's two camps of people i guess uh some thinks it, it's a ghost. 
And yeah. then others thinks it's a cryptid. <clears throat> and one thing I've noticed too is, uh, you know, there's, you know, several different ideas and theories of, you know, of green eyes, one being the soldier, you know, and everything, you know, uh, another one, uh, is, you know, it goes back to the native Americans, you know, and I even, I remember hearing a story, uh, about this guy who wrote in his, uh, civil war diary about old green eyes. But he's now that like I said, now guys, this is this is really, really freaky. But and it said that uh, it was talking about it in the journal, and it said he was laying there after a battle. It said he was badly wounded, and he was laying there waiting for the you know the medics to come to him, things like that. And he said, you know, on the battlefield, he said there was you know soldiers laying all around, wounded, dead, and everything else, and said that green eyes was walking around and said it would lean over and I, you know, almost like it was like smelling of the bodies. Mm. And like I said, and like I said, that was supposed to, you know, they said that was supposedly in a civil war journal. Wow. I thought that was kind of wild. Yeah. I had heard something similar. Uh, I, I, I don't know what I heard about it was, uh, kind of gruesome. I don't know if I'm going to mention it too much on here, but it was messing with, it did something to the bodies on the battlefield. Man. Uh, it's it it's crazy. Crazy. It pretty gross. Yeah. 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 It's definitely crazy. Um, LeBron said that he thinks he's seen both a cryptid and a, a green eyed ghost there. That, oh man. Huh. But you know something like that when you know uh, a battle on you know for an old battlefield or something like that. You know when there's anything like that with so much death, especially suddenly like that, it may open up something. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. where things can come through and stuff. So there's no telling what might all I would be seeing in a place like that. Yeah, LeBron says there's tons of ghosts there. Oh. Hey, spooky hand pink waving. What? Oh, it's supposed uh, to be for an emoji. Oh, hello, love bug. <laughs> <laughs> hey, love bug. How you doing? Uh, show up as squares. Did Laura just call us squares? <laughs> she said a lot of times the emojis show up as squares. Oh, okay. I thought she was calling us squares. <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't be surprising. <laughs> oh. Hey, I we're mean, the that's cool guys. A, it's an older insult, but it still checks out. Yeah. <laughs> he said that's an older insult, but it checks out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mercy me. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that like said that uh, that reminded uh you know, like me, you know, my uncle's story. Um now Back years and years ago, um, pretty sure this was back in like the uh, 1970s ish. Uh, <clears throat> he was dating his then girlfriend, right? And excuse me, sorry about that, folks. I had to cough. Uh, he was dating his then girlfriend, and they was uh, it, it worked out. They had uh, the night off the same night. And they was wanting to go somewhere, you know, where they could be alone. You know, they was real young, things like that, you know. And it, he, so they decided to go out to the old battlefield, you know, down there. And so they get down there, you know, he said they, they get there and they kick back and they're, you know, just hanging out and stuff, you know, and talking about how pretty it is, and, you know, Almost kind of spooky too, because they said it was a, it was real, real late, but it was also, you know, like a moonlit night and stuff, you know, and, uh, weren't no, you know, nobody there, you know, walking around like during the day, kind of like a different atmosphere altogether. And 
it said that well he's you know he's sitting there you know and everything and all of a sudden he sees something in the rearview mirror out of the corner of his eye and when he looks he says he sees these this says a set of green eyes you know staring at him you know you can see it through the mirror you know and it just i mean just freaks him out right and so he gets all these you know just like crazy feelings and stuff you know everything you know and so he cranks up and takes off and stuff and everything you know and he said that he uh said he had just got his nova chevy nova and he said he remembered that thing would run pretty good and he said that there you know he's slinging gravel you know everything they're just flying out of there right you know, his girlfriend's screaming, you know, not knowing what's going on and everything. And he said, while he's going, you know, he said, the speedometer is just almost pegged out. And he said that it's still right there, keeping up with him, you know. And he said, right as they get out of the park, boom, it's gone. And then he, you know, he was feeling his girlfriend on what happened and stuff and everything but after that after they had that you know that encounter he said that he never uh, they never went back ever again he said he even had chances to go back with you know uh even when they moved you know down here not far from where i live now which is the reason you know, probably be quite a few hours or several hours away you know he said he's had people you know so, hey, you know, let's go to the old battlefield, check it out. You know, our tree, you know, you just show up or we'll pick you up, things like that. He said, no, I will not ever set foot in that place again. Mm. I, I don't know. Uh, LeBron kept telling me I need to go there. I don't know if I want to go there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm telling you, man, I've heard some freaky stories about that place, man. I mean, even in the broad open daylight. I guess where it's not too awful close to me, I, I don't hear a lot about it. I, I don't know. I hear, well, I, you know, I hear what's close to me. The one, I mean, the one I heard about the most was the Black Sisters growing up. And then, uh, what is it? The Green Briar Ghost I heard about a lot because that's only an hour away from me. You heard little bit about mothman here and there and uh flatwoods monster was close to right That's, those are the ones i heard and then a bunch of ufo and bigfoot things we heard about those a lot and you know i said uh <clears throat> i got one about a ufo here a while back and it was pretty wild, you know, but like I said, that's something you don't really hear much about, especially like back in the old days. Mm -hmm. You know, you got a heard... UFO one? You didn't? Yeah. Yeah. And did, uh, you, it... did you feature it on your channel? Yep. Sure did. It's, uh, it may be a member's thing. I, I can't remember. Oh, okay. Uh, I think, um, Laura had one with, with y'all. I thought that sounded kind of like a UFO story. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Was it, you think, or? Very possible. Very possible. Ask her that. Yeah. I'm uh, sorry to put y'all on the spot because I, I kept meaning to ask and I kept forgetting. Um, I, what? I guess I'm next. Um, <clears throat> this one's kind of a short one. It's like the the short version of. Uh, I wanted to do the Flatwoods Monster just because it's in the thumbnail. It's also a good one too yeah don't get a lot of you know don't get a lot of street cred you know so to speak but yeah the flatwoods you know, it, it's monster, pretty good yeah the flatwoods monster there's there's some really great stories i think jared we talked about doing a uh one of those story collections of the flatwoods yeah. monster i think we should do that um i think so too man at some point i think the next one we're going to do is uh um we're going to do one on the black sisters yeah, that's so going to be really, you've really got, good. Um, some stories. Yeah, I did have a good thing. Oh, for hey, thank you so, so much, Moth Mistress. She said, oh. Jared makes a really good partner to Jimmy. I always enjoy the conversation. <laughs> we get that I, a lot. <laughs> yeah, I like having, I, I, I like the, I mean, I we work well together. These. 
Yeah, I could do these on my own and these story collections on my own, but I think it's a lot more fun when I have Jared on. Yeah, like I said, yeah, me and Jimmy, like I said, you know, we work well together. You know, you we both really schedules. enjoy it. Yeah, and like I said, and you know, like I said, we just enjoy doing it too. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we have a lot of fun. Yeah, what, what I was gonna say was, if you are, if if you've got any stories you think could be related to the Black Sisters from the Christiansburg, Virginia area, yes, send those in to us. I've already got a few. Um, we're, I guess, we're most. If you think it's related, or if you've had anything weird happen at Sunset Cemetery or the old Christiansburg High School, send that in to us, and we'll add it in for our next, uh, I guess, story compilation thing in the Bob. Has it, yeah, because it's going to be really ever good. Been to, yeah, it is. Um, Droop Mountain. I've never. I've heard of it, but I've never been there. Carrie, thank you so, so much, sister. And Man Cave, uh, hey, brother, like I said, I seen your comment earlier, but we was talking, and I didn't get to say hi, but oh. hey. <laughs> Randall, everybody's saying Randall. Oh, I'm late. Oh, well, I'm glad you're Better here. Better late than never. <laughs> Good to see you, brother. Oh, if you got to go, make sure you catch the replay. Definitely. Um, man cave what? metal. <laughs> hey, said Jerry, I think you bring out more of the spooky and spooky. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I was spooky before I met Jared. <laughs> He's the definition of spooky. If you look up uh, spooky in the dictionary, there's a picture of Jimmy there. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, oh, before we got sidetracked, um. Oh, the Flatwoods monster story. This is the. F I don't know that it's the uh, the the first. It was the first one that made headlines. There was one that took place a day before, but this is the one that uh, made the headlines. Uh, the one that happened a day before, I think the person uh, reported to like fifty years later. Or something like that. I, I don't crucify right. me because of the number. I don't know that number off the top of my head. It was a long, it was 30, 50 something years later. I don't know. Um, anyways, uh, Flatwoods, Virginia, on September 12th, 1952, around seven o'clock in the evening, brothers Eddie and Freddie May and their friends Neil Nunley. Tommy Heiler and Ronnie Schaefer were playing football on the lawn of Flatwoods Elementary School when the group of them saw what they described as a fireball fly quickly overhead and land on a nearby hilltop just past the Fisher Farm. The group, after conscripting Kathleen May and Jean Lemon, crossed the farm and walked into the woods where the boys thought that the fireball had landed. In an account provided by Nunley, he reportedly saw a pulsing red light near the top of the hill. Then suddenly, Lemon saw a pair of shining animal-like eyes and aimed a flashlight in their direction. The light revealed a towering, man-like figure with a round, red face surrounded by a pointed, hood-like shape. The body was dark and seemingly colorless, but some would later say it was green. Mrs. May reported seeing rape-like folds. The monster was observed only momentarily as suddenly it emitted a hissing sound and glided towards the group. Lemon screamed, dropping his flashlight in terror. The group ran in horror to try to escape what they had found. 
that one's a crazy story. There's, man, there's longer oh, versions man. and more details that came out later. Um, this is just one that the, the, the Flatwoods Monster Museum uh, sent me. Um, let me see. One, one, one uh, thing I heard was that the creature spat oil or something out at them. Yeah, I've they heard that. Them all. Um, I've heard that uh, they all got sick after this. Yeah. Even the dog. I'd heard that the dog actually got sick and died, but I also I heard from the Flatwoods Monster Museum owner that that was not true. That the dog lived to a nice old age, so that That's that good. was good to, uh, yeah. So that, I was a little concerned over that one, but it, it lived to a nice old age, and uh, that's that's good. Um, there's a couple more encounter stories. Maybe, just maybe, we'll be able to get them all into our uh, a future coalition uh, video. Yeah, I just that would be really neat. Them all up. Um, there was a story that happened in the nineties that uh, another fireball landed. There was there was a bunch of fireballs that landed in. Yeah, there was a bunch of fireballs. Yeah, there was actually one the same night, just a few hours before, a lady was driving to church, saw one, and saw a creature come out of it. Wow. And she just got out of there. But, uh, yeah, definitely, definitely interesting. Um, what do you guys think? I think the chat thinks that spooky is definitely spooky. They're talking about how spooky you are. <laughs> See, there's a uh, uh, Jimmy So Scary... Uh, yeah, booger ship in a passing gear to get away from him. Uh, so Dang. spooky that they say his name at mirrors and slumber parties. <laughs> oh man, that's awesome! I hope so. It's a good way to get more subscribers. If I'm getting mummered at uh, some slumber parties, my fireball comes in. Oh, I know what you're talking about there. Uh. But yeah, that that's the Flatwoods monster, Jared. If you want to look around uh, and try and find another one, or if you know one by heart that you want to tell, another uh, Appalachian cryptid story. Uh, yeah, actually, uh, here's one I got a while back. I hadn't got around to telling you yet, but uh, said uh, th now this one goes back. Uh, let's see, where is it? It's can't remember the name of the town. It's here in Tennessee, though, up in the eastern eastern Tennessee, close to the North Carolina line. But anyway, it goes back to like the 1940s, I think. And i um, pretty sure this was like a lizard man kind of thing. And this uh, guy said him and his, him and his wife. Said that uh, this, like I said, now the one that sent it to me, we, this happened to his uh, great grandparents. And said that uh, they, the story goes, said that, you know, they live way back in the mountains, you know. And back then, as we all know, you know, you didn't get to go to town and they weren't much, you know, you know, the closest neighbor a lot of times would be a few miles away or things like that, you know. Well, said that they was going into town one day. So they went and got some supplies flour you know cornmeal things like that well see when they's coming back said they stopped to let uh uh their old horse you know said he was carrying all their load you know and stuff and uh said they stopped and let an old horse uh go down to this old water hole like you know back in the mountains back in the woods you know well said that they's down there letting you drink and stuff and everything and said they was just kindly resting a minute themselves. We said out on the other side, said the water starts moving. Said it was just said the water was just kind of rippling. And said that they got to watch it and said the way it looked, said it almost looked like a giant snake. You know, the way the water would ripple. And so all of a sudden, said this thing started crawling out up on the bank. Said the other side of the bank was like an uphill slope. Said as it was crawling out of there. So they first then it hit him. and said he thought, well, Lord, that's an old alligator or something. Said, what's that doing in these parts? Till it stood up. 
said it stood up, had her back, had its back to him. Said it stood up, said it had, it was like a, just this brownish green color. It said it had scales all over it, but said it had hands like a man, but claws instead of fingernails. Said it had big old eyes, boy, just big as a saucer, you know. It said it would look left and it would look right. It said they were so scared, so they just didn't even, said they didn't even, you know, hardly make a sound, you know. And it said that the old horse made a noise. See, when it did, it said it jumped and turned around and looked at him. See, when it did, it said it let out a screech like. And see, when it did, it said they had to hold their ears. And said it did it so loud that even though they held their ears, see, his, eye, his wife, one of her ears started bleeding. And it said then the horse started, you know, becoming disheveled, you know, and stuff. So it said that he grabbed his wife. Throwed her in the cart with the rest of the stuff and everything. Grabbed the horse by the reins and led it out of there. It said it went down the water like it was going to chase him. Well, that scared him half to death, you know, and everything. So, said he was leading that horse up at up the path as far as, you know, fast as he could go. But said, luckily enough, said they never seen it no more. Said they never went back down there again. And said then they went and, you know, told their neighbors about it and stuff like that. And, you know, what they'd saw, you know, people knowing they weren't, you know, the kind that make anything up like that. Everybody stayed away from that area. But said that everybody they talked to never seen anything or said anything about seeing anything like that. So you never know. But it was a definitely a spooky, spooky incident. Man. Yeah, I thought that was pretty wild. Yeah, that is wild. I'd love to get that story for a little <laughs> yeah, while. I'd actually, sort of in here, but... like I said, I, I'd forgot all about that one. Like I said, I have it in my email. Like I said, I got a bunch of emails. But like I said, I had that one. When, when uh, we was talking this morning, like I said, that one popped in my head. I'm kind of glad I got to tell it. I'm glad you told it, too. I would love to feature it as an individual story on here one day. I'll be sure and ask my buddy about that and everything. I'm yeah, sure he wouldn't sure. mind. Yeah. All right. Well, sounds like I'm pretty dang spooky with, uh, from what people are saying in the uh, chat. Huh. <laughs> oh, man. Now that's yeah. pretty spooky. Yeah, I, I do that too. Yeah, Jimmy's so spooky, the Tommy Knockers. And they has. tap in. When they're tapping, oh, the Tommy yeah, Knockers nod and says, stay away. Yeah. <laughs> Jimmy's coming high. <laughs> yep. Um, all right. Well, I think that I should tell this Mothman story, this new one. And I guess I believe so, too. I'm ready. I want to hear down it. Here before my wife comes down here and strangles me for taking too yeah. long. Yeah. He'll beat you up and then reach through the screen beat me up. <laughs> all right so this one came from north augusta south carolina uh she said that it happened in uh 2021 augusta oh. south carolina i don't know I, th I think it's near uh savannah so maybe uh, lebron might know about this one this place hello yeah but i I watched your show about the North Carolina Mothman sighting earlier today and wanted to share my own. My story took place about two years ago in South Carolina near Savannah River in Georgia. My daughter and I were sitting in our living room when we heard something big land on our metal roof not long after. I started to hear what sounded like biting sounds at our front door and we could hear heavy breathing. My daughter and I were pretty frightened, but we managed to gather the courage to go outside and look to see what it was. We couldn't see a thing with it being 12 o'clock at night. 
not even with a flashlight shine up there. We could hear what sounded like this huge screaming bird on our roof. It was also breathing very loudly, and we could hear its wings and what sounded like a horrible screaming sound. Eventually, we heard it hop over to the old oak tree next to the house, and then it sounded like it took off from there. We had no idea what it was doing or what it was. About the same week, I had a vision like a projector screen in my head. Cars were piling up on the bridge that we were going to drive over the next day. I changed my mind and decided not to go. Then I saw on the news the next day there was a car accident on that very bridge. So I'm guessing maybe it was trying to warn me. Let me know what you think. I think he was trying to say Jerry King TV should never go to that area. Yeah. <laughs> Man, that was a good What do y'all think of that? That's pretty wild, huh? That was pretty wild, man. I seen one here. Queen Laura TV said, Jimmy is so spooky that black eyed children won't even knock on his door. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what he likes to hear. Yeah. Well, folks, this has been a ton of fun. Uh, it looks like we've had a uh, pretty good turnout. I, I, I hadn't been paying attention the whole time. It says 34 right now. Yeah, it's almost an hour already. That went by yeah. fast. Yeah, it did. Well, we we ran out of stories almost early on and had to <laughs> find some more, but I think it tur turned out good. People got a good, good bunch of um, stories. Oh, yeah. I hope they, uh, Myers, I'm glad you liked it. Yeah, I thought it was good, too. It's, this is kind of a draft of what's coming out in a couple of weeks. Um, that and another one. But, uh, yeah, um, thank you all for coming and listening tonight. Um, hearing about, uh, thanks, Betsy. Hearing about, what, two hours? Jared's yep. got a stream. So uh, be sure and check that out for some more stories. I don't know. What, what's your theme tonight, Jared? Uh, no, tonight's my uh, birthday stream. So I'm just going to be opening up some uh, mail some people sent in and just hang around and talk a little bit. Did you get any mail from me? I actually did. It oh, came in today. Open that up. I am on the stream again. On the stream again. Well, that's good. Cause, well, I threw some extra stuff in. Well, you haven't opened it yet, have you? I haven't. No, I haven't opened oh, it. Actually, I'm, I darn! I'm I, gonna... I need to. I need to be quiet then. <laughs> spoiler alert. Yep. Spoiler alert. Okay. Um. So yeah. Uh. Thank you all for coming out. Uh. uh if you're new here, be sure to check out some of our uh, some of our older videos. I guess you know we've got a playlist of everything. But yeah, the, I got a lot of comments in the chat that there were a couple that people said they were new. Head over to the YouTube channel and give some of these stories a listen. Um, if you're liking this, there's what two years worth of stories on here. Yeah, so man, they're all good, real good. Dig into them. You got stories, you got some to, cool locations, all kind of stuff. Oh, yeah, I do location videos, too. I go around Appalachia and film some of these locations. So yep. be sure to check that out. I don't know why those haven't been getting as many views as the stories lately, but a lot of work goes into those. Yep. They're really all good. Right. Be sure to like and share, everybody. Going to get back in it. Well, actually, the guy that I used to do this with, um, Phil isn't part of the channel anymore. Um, I don't really game, really. So, uh, I guess not. Sorry? Not at this point, anyway. <laughs> not at this point. I, I don't know. I'm just... 
Huh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Norma Green says, hey, hey Norma, how you doing, sister? Good to see you, and thanks for coming in. Well, <laughs> all right, for the last time, I'm he we're heading out. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for coming hanging out, night. folks. God bless. All right, have a good one, and y'all take care. Stay spooky. Well, folks, I just wanted to say thank all y'all that made it to the end of this. I think when I looked, it was at three hours and 43 minutes before I added this little ending on to it. Wow. I hope y'all enjoy it. Um, definitely going to do more of these since y'all love them so much. Uh, just going to try and think of some ideas for the next one. Uh, if you've got any ideas, you know, drop a comment and uh, let me know what kind of collection you think I should do. If I've got enough stories to splice together, I'll do it. Um, yeah, also another idea. Eventually, once I make enough of these, maybe I can splice all those together and make a 24-hour one. That would be cool, wouldn't it? And then set it up as a premiere, but uh, yeah. Again, thank you all for watching, and uh, be sure to catch the next one. See ya.